I want to begin with this image to remind us of who we are fighting for, who the future of the world in general. What is social amelioration? In the Webster Dictionary, by definition, to ameliorate means to make better. The social amelioration mandate comes from RA 11469, also known as the Bayanihan Act. In section three, and I quote, immediately mobilize assistance in the provision of basic necessities to families and individuals affected by the imposition of community quarantine, especially indigents and their families. Thus, social amelioration, which encompasses not just cash subsidies, but also goods, loans, policies, and services, is one of the four pillars of the country's strategy in fighting COVID-19. Social amelioration, therefore, means ensuring the welfare of the Filipino people as we weather through the challenges of COVID-19. Social amelioration is what government needs to roll out now to make things better. It is our lifeboat, our Salva Vida. Taking extraordinary measures means we have to learn to adapt to this unique problem at hand. We need to think and act differently and hopefully put aside greed, distrust, and self-interest. We need to stand as one so that we can heal as one. And for this, we have to, prepare, to be prepared to change our ways. We start by asking the right questions. How long is this going to last? Who are most vulnerable and how do we provide for them? How do we deliver effective programs? This past week, the world saw a declining trend in COVID-19 infections and deaths throughout the world, including the Philippines. These results encourage countries to ease restrictions and get out of lockdown. But is lifting the quarantine really going to bring us back to pre-COVID days? Sadly, the answer is no. Since February, the World Health Organization has underlined the fact that a vaccine will take at least 18 months. Without it, we will not see any finality to this virus. While the world waits, we all suffer the painful side effects, loss of jobs, income, and economic slowdown. The International Labor Organization is expecting global job losses to reach 195 million in the next three months alone. As long as the jobs are not there, our country will need social amelioration. For our country to manage our requirement for social amelioration, we have to think outside the box. We need to be open to exploring different strategies, one of which is to focus on creating alternative jobs and products via retooling. During World War II, this considerably, considerably helped reduce unemployment. And this is happening already. For example, producers of perfume are starting to make rubbing alcohol. Makers of vacuum cleaners, are making ventilators. And we can do this at our own capacities. Many opportunities may be home-based. This strategy could be woven in a more effective quarantine exit plan. This is not suggesting as a substitute for cash and good social amelioration, but rather a way to soften the economic impact of a longer COVID-19 economic recession. Slide six, please. One of the most important changes is widening our perspective on who we need to help, who the target beneficiaries really are. Are the target beneficiaries still your usual traditional poor sector, defined as living below the national poverty threshold? Or has COVID-19 affected other groups? Just a slight note on families versus households. Realize that the Bayanihan Act specifies helping 18 million households. If this body permits that we use the unit family.
Institute of Development Studies report published in 2018. So the income estimates are based on 2017 prices. This stratification is no surprise to us. If you look at the slide, traditionally, the, po the portion of Filipino families living below the poverty threshold hover around 20%. Here, the report used as 22%, it's a bit higher, but let's take it at face value since it will not matter in the course of our discussion. On the left side, you have the number of families belonging to each income stratum. And on your right, you have the average monthly family income of the same stratum. So for the poor income group, there are 5.4 million families earning less than 9,520 per month. I assume that the majority of this group are members of War Peace, as the program is currently serving around 4.5 of the poorest families. This is the pre-COVID definition of who is poor, the traditional definition of poor. But with COVID-19, the lockdown and ECQ, and general world recession, we need to expand the definition to, newly, to the newly poor, which will now cover low income and lower middle income groups. So looking at the diagram, these two groups include nine plus 6.4 million families, bringing the total families in need to 20 million families or 85% of all families in the Philippines. For reference, we are using 24.6 million families as total number of families. With a clearer idea of our income strata, perhaps we can expand the emergency cash subsidy program from 18 million to 20 million families. Furthermore, as we widen our coverage to include the poor and newly poor, this is a strong indication that we can relax the seemingly stringent procedures that are currently being used by DSWD right now. Case in point. I won't go farther from home. Our Liga president, Kagawad Baby Laurente, says that his greatest torment in collating or coming up with a list that is in keeping with all of DSWD's qualifiers are the constant pleas of constituents, those who pre-COVID days were earning very well but are now suddenly without any income. They too need amelioration. Wa me mamintaha kap, they say. In Tagalog, it means hindi kami nagdadahilan, makatanggap lang. Pasensya na, walang wala lang talaga. These are families whose income earners have lost jobs and whose small businesses are hard hit due to COVID. Just to reiterate, here on the left-hand side, in the yellow box, these are the income groups we classify as new poor and are the target for social amelioration. Above that, in gray box, these are the income groups not eligible for social amelioration. So let's go a little bit further into getting to know our target beneficiaries. This slide shows us where our target beneficiaries are working or used to work. On the left axis, we have the industries providing employment and sources of income. The bars are split into the orange part on the left. This represents the low income group and the blue representing the middle income group. Let's first look at agriculture. We can see the stark difference between the proportion of low income workers employed in agriculture versus mid middle income. This is the largest employer for the low income group. Conversely, wholesale and retail is the biggest employer for the middle income group. This includes the self-employed and owners of small businesses like a small carinderia or a food franchise. What's important in this chart is for us to understand that our target beneficiaries now come from a wide range of industries, including transportation, manufacturing, especially non-essential products, construction, real estate development. The other sector includes a diverse range of professions, such as those working in salons, barbershops, the spa, electronics, appliance, car repair, creatives. So we keep in mind that the net is now cast much, much wider than it was pre-COVID times. Next slide, please. This chart is also very enlightening because it is a big departure from thinking that the poor 
and hence our target beneficiaries are residing in the countryside. We see here that this assumption does not hold true with a newly poor definition. Each vertical column represents the income groups. And here, let's focus on the first three columns from the left, covering our new target groups, poor, low income, lower middle income. The orange portion of the columns represent the proportion of that income group residing in rural areas. The blue portion represents the proportion of that income group residing in the urban areas. Again, we see the stark difference between the poor and lower middle class. The traditionally poor are mostly in rural areas, understandably so since most are engaged in agriculture. In contrast, the lower middle income are largely in urban areas. These differences should be utilized in considering effective methods of determining or identifying and distributing emergency subsidies to our target beneficiaries. Next slide, please. Now that we have a clearer understanding of whose welfare we must ensure, now that we have seen the face of our target beneficiaries, let us look at how our current social amelioration programs are helping this target group. This schematic is a re-illustration of the contents of Joint Memorandum Circular Number 1, which provides the primary guidelines for social amelioration as intended by the Bayanihan Heal as One Act. We have categorized the programs according to social amelioration medium. Number one, cash subsidies, which are distributed by three agencies, DSWD, DOLE, and the DA. We will talk about this more on the next slide. We have the loans category to be implemented by BPI, DA, and the land bank. We have food and non-food subsidies, which is a joint effort among LGUs, DSWD, with the assistance of the AFP and PMP, and the DPI. Also very important, the Bayanihan Act lays out critical policies that will help ease the financial obligations of our target beneficiaries. Lastly, the circular also touches upon services from the DSWD, DPI, and DA to support certain target groups as well. In subsequent slides, we will address the need for more critical sector-specific services. These came out from an informal survey recently, recently conducted by this cluster. All of these social amelioration modalities are important in an integrated social amelioration program. However, it is paramount that we get our act together in addressing the most pressing issue right now, which we all can agree is the distribution of cash subsidies. The distribution of emergency cash subsidies is primarily driven by DSWD with a budget of 200 billion for two months. DSWD's program is split between A, four piece families and B, non-4Ps families. Although the DSWD says that the funds have already been downloaded to the LGU level, the present implementation and qualification guidelines have proven to be a monstrous challenge for the LGUs. Therefore, many families have not received their cash subsidies even until now. So this is what we are proposing in light of the wider net that we have to cast in terms of target beneficiaries. We have to relax the qualifications in giving cash subsidies for the following reasons. The wider net now covers 85% of families. That leaves out only 15% of Filipino families. So literally, why are we even asking so many questions when we know that we want to give to 85% of families? The key issue now becomes, how do we make sure that each family within the 85% received the cash subsidy and promptly at that. We propose that the list of families be created by the barangay itself to be, to be validated by the CSWD and DSWD. Slide 13. From a theoretical standpoint, there is really enough money to give at least 5,000 for 85% of all Filipino families. This will cover the poor, the low income and lower middle income groups. Let's begin with a DSWD budget of 100 billion for emergency cash subsidy for a month. Plainly, 
100 billion divided by 5,000 is 20 million families. So understanding that there is enough for so many families and 85% is a wide enough net, we can proceed to think of a simplified equitable distribution process and here is a six step process that we are proposing to do this. Step 1A, all the four P families, all the four P's families with land, bank, with land bank accounts must be credited immediately. Otherwise, house to house delivery. This should be easy since distribution has been done to those pre-qualified families in the past. Step 1B, DSWD to release list of four P's families per barangay. Step two, barangays make a list of families below the 85th income percentile, excluding four piece families. Step three, barangay lists are collated per city or municipality, then collated to a provincial list. For independent and charter cities that don't report to a governor, they remit their lists directly to DSWD. As an added step for transparency, the LGU can and should publish the list so its constituents know that they are on the list and expectations are set and managed. Step four, each governor or local chief executive submits number of families to DSWD. Step five, DSWD reports to the president on how many actual families were listed as below the 85th income percentile less four Ps. This should equal at most 16 million families. This step will make sure that all parties are working with the same baseline figures. Otherwise, all our assumptions will prove futile. Step six, once the total count of families tally with national level expectations, 16 million, then disbursement per family can be done as soon as possible, house to house. The only documentation needed would be a valid ID of the head of family, for the beneficiary to sign that he has received the subsidy and a photo of beneficiary receiving cash. Although this process seems very simplistic, it delivers prompt aid and at the same time removes unnecessary qualifications and documentation. Getting the emergency cash subsidies to getting the emergency cash subsidy to the families who need it is just the first item on the social amelioration agenda. That's why we have to get it right. Ensuring the welfare of the Filipino people in this COVID-19 crisis will require more than cash subsidies. The social amelioration cluster is the largest cluster in the House of Representatives made up of 25 committees. Together, we collaborate to monitor situations on the ground and lend an ear to various sectors that are affected by the COVID-19 phenomenon in different ways. The first project was a SWOT analysis of demand and supply sectors to determine how they are affected by COVID-19. The committees under social amelioration work tirelessly to gather pertinent and current information from national agencies and sectoral organizations to help us identify the vulnerabilities brought on by COVID-19 on a per sector basis. The SWOT analysis became an integral part of our baseline data and information. Our guide in, that, in delving deeper into specific needs of each sector. Similar to disaster preparedness, I cannot emphasize enough the need for relevant pre-disaster baseline data to help us make intelligent decisions and pursue meaningful courses of action. As the speaker said at the very beginning of today's meeting, it is high time that we implement the national ID law and perhaps allow it to accommodate pre-disaster data. I apologize, but I'm afraid our reports are just too extensive to take up here with our limited time, but please reach out to us for a copy of our reports. The social amelioration cluster went on to specific citizen sectors to identify specific requirements to alleviate the effects of the pandemic. We looked at the following vulnerable sectors. Let me begin with Filipinos displaced due to disaster. It is very sad that Taal, which just happened this January, seems so long ago because of the gravity of COVID-19. I just want to make sure that we do not forget about them. As of now, there are still 4,000 people living in evacuation centers. Also, let us not forget the 17,000 displaced individuals from the Marawi siege 
still living in shelters. COVID-19 increases their, their vulnerabilities due to lack of sanitation and water services. Informal settlers, they are vulnerable as most are living in tight spaces with homes often shared by multiple families. Quarantine areas must be offered to families. OFWs are affected in many ways. Firstly, the travel ban has delayed or canceled many overseas assignments. It is also uncertain, it is also an uncertain time for many already abroad since job losses abroad is at an all time high. Also, many of our OFWs are health workers working the front lines in foreign countries. They face a real risk of infection and death. Pregnant women are especially vulnerable during this time as newborns may be infected with a virus. We must allow for COVID free hospitals or medical facilities that can serve pregnant women and newborn babies. Also, during this time, many women and other genders face acts of violence as quarantine induces conflicts and friction in tight spaces. We must strengthen our hotline against violence. There are over 10 million senior citizens and 175,000 veterans. The government has allocated 23 billion pesos for the social pension program for indigent set for indigent seniors. Its release would be very timely during this COVID crisis. This vulnerable group requires assistance with mobility and timely COVID-19 testing if symptoms arise. Also, most of them have pre-existing conditions that require maintenance medications. We must ensure the availability of medicines and the seniors and veterans' ability to afford said medicines. Also, the Veterans Hospital requests additional funding of 126 million pesos to help them capacitate for veterans infected by COVID-19. Most PWDs have mobility issues even pre-COVID. Now, with the unavailability of public transport, PWDs are restricted from attending to medical needs as well as procuring daily needs. The issue of children will be tackled in detail in one of the clusters reports in an unusual situation of extended vacation. Many indigent children find, them, find themselves with not enough food for daily sustenance. Children are likewise often victims of domestic violence. To wrap up, the COVID-19 crisis will most likely have a longer term horizon until a viable vaccine is available. By the looks of it, the Philippines and the rest of the world are in for a bumpy next couple of years. When we succeed in stabilizing our rates of infections and deaths to a bare minimum, we may safely consider a quarantine exit plan. However, until we can completely defeat COVID-19 all around the world, we will need to keep afloat. And at the risk of sounding morbid, the experience that is COVID-19 can be likened to a shipwreck. That is the bad news. The good news is the shoreline is not too far away. We just need to swim to safety. But not all of us know how to swim, and even those that can may not be able to swim the distance. We need a salvavida. Social amelioration is our salvavida. But for them to feel that social amelioration, our salvavida, has, as we defined it at the very beginning of this presentation, made better and obviously dire situation we need to get it to the beneficiaries efficiently and expediently. Time is of the essence. Thank you, my buntag natong tanan, and God bless us all. Tagan salamat. Salamat kaayo, our uh, team leader, co-chair, um, uh, Kong Lucy Torres Gomez, for such a wonderful presentation. Very clear and very, very um, comprehensive. And uh, at this point, I'd like to um, uh, introduce to you our next um, uh, co-chair or our chair for the um, uh, social amelioration cluster, uh, none other than our deputy speaker, uh, Congressman Luis El Rey Villafuerte, the congressman of the second district of Kamsur. He's currently the deputy speaker for finance at the House of Representatives, a trailblazing entrepreneur who graduated with highest academic distinctions from De La Salle University and completed the executive education program at Stanford University. His export business earned him, among other awards, the prestigious 
World Young Business Achiever Award and the 10 Outstanding Young Men Award for Entrepreneurship in 2002. In 2003, the Philippine Chamber of Commerce and Industry recognized him for business leadership, while the Export Development Council awarded him with their top sectoral export performance distinction. During his three consecutive terms as governor, Camarino Sur leaped from the 39th poorest to the 10th richest province in the Philippines and became a global tourist destination and investment hub. Congressman Elrey's achievements were recognized by both the public and private sector award-giving bodies such as the Junior Chamber International, the JCI, which recognized him among the outstanding young persons of the 10 outstanding young persons for social entrepreneurship in 2008. In 2009, then President Gloria Macapagal awarded him with the Presidential Citation for Best Practice in Creating Business Investment Enabling Environment in 2009. His El Verde movement earned for Kamsur two spots in the Guinness Book of World Records, one for planting the most number of trees and the other for planting the most number of mangrove saplings in an hour. In 2013, he was awarded the Tourism Champion of the Philippines by the Department of Tourism. Congressman Elray's presentation <coughs> will highlight the need for sustainable social amelioration policy <coughs> as against mere dole outs in the uplifting of the economy in the face of the challenges of the COVID-19 pandemic. Recognizing that government cannot sustain the giving of mere dole outs, his presentation shows that the government's spending towards public investments in health, education, agriculture, and local roads and infrastructure is needed in order to create jobs and sustainable impact to the community level. Deputy Speaker Ellery Villafuerte, you have the floor. Thank you, Majority Leader, Speaker Alan. Secretary Rolly, Secretary Bebot Bello, Secretary Mon, and our distinguished colleagues, uh, Chair Lucy. Uh, I will uh, have a presentation. Um, let me start off with uh, just giving a, a picture of what's happening in our country right now. Can, can you hear me, Martin? I can hear you loud and clear. <laughs> uh, let me just uh, give a picture no, of what's happening after the lockdown. Uh, I was inspired by this article uh, to do this presentation. Uh, an article uh, featured in a major daily. Mar Marlon Dalipe is a construction worker from Camarini Sur. He went to Manila for a better job opportunity so, so that he can sustain his wife and children. But because of COVID-19 and the strict implementation of the ECQ, the construction site he was working at is temporarily closed. Public transportation also stopped. He is now jobless. So he walked from Alabang to Camarini Sur for five days. Darren, are you the one doing the presentation? Uh, so many people like Marlon Delipi ventured out of their province in search for a greener pasture. But when COVID-19 struck the entire nation, they are found to be jobless. As a result, 1.3 million construction workers are stranded. And they, will have, they would have to return to their province without a job and a source of livelihood. Next slide, please. These construction workers symbolize hardship, helplessness, hopelessness that many Filipinos are experiencing today. Uh, just to give you a brief uh, uh, background and a proper uh, perspective, uh, we, we've interviewed uh, a few people who've experienced this. Uh, Darren, can you play the video? May sound ba? Po ako po bilang sir sa ice cream na dinig nila ina ako po si Laisil Kama galing po ako sa barangay Kupang Antipolo City nagtatrabaho po ako bilang sir sa ice cream man na, na ano po na nang simula nalaman nung nagsimula po yung lockdown 
wala po akong ipon kasi po po sa pamilya ko ang padala ko kasi ang hira po ng buhay dito sa probinsya eh. yung asawa ko po ay eh, nagkokopra lang po eh magkano yung kilo ng kopra ay eh, 18 lang kaya po nung naalaman ko po yung project programa po ni Gob Elre ay ni Mix Villa Protect ni Congressman Elre ay nag, uh, nag madali po ako na maka ano sa palaran lang nga po pumunta ng Kubawi para po makauwi matagal na po pala nalaman yung pagano ni Gob at ni Elre ng pagbabalik probinsya inuhuli na po pala ako kaya po kahit po wala sabi po nila pag hindi daw po tinawagan galing kapitol hindi daw po makakauwi kaya po ako ay nagsapalaran na lamang nakatulong nga po kami sa kabaw ng isang gabi eh. nagantay lang po ng bus kaya po ang hirap po talaga nung nag lockdown po ang hirap po kasi po sa tinitirahan mo po eh, wala naman pong relief kasi daw po hindi kabutanti doon kaya po sobrang hirap po talaga nakakawa po kasi sa pamilya ko eh Maka po, pag hindi po ako umuwi Paano pong magkasakit ako? Eh, hindi na po inuwi sa pamilya mong buhay eh. Kaya po talagang hirap. Di ba sa ako po wala rin ipon. Kaya maraming maraming salamat po kay sa mag amang ano mar, ma, ang busilak po ang puso talaga. Na maraming natutulungin na tao eh. Kaya sana po patuloy pa rin po silang magserbisyo sa gobyerno para po talaga maraming matulungan nung ano po paano po pagkain pag sa doon hindi na kami kumakain eh yung upa po ng bahay isisingilin daw po pag bumalik eh wala na po kayong babalikan na trabaho kasi mo matagal pa eh baka po abutin pa daw ng December eh, ice cream po yung tinitinda namin wala pong bibili kasi yung paano pag sinip on eh doon po mag-uumpisa daw yung cost ng COVID eh sa sip on kaya po sobra talagang hirap Kaya nagdesisyon na lang po kahit pa yung pamilya namin eh nag nagiiyak na po eh kasi paano daw po ang makauwi dahil wala nga pong biyahe. Huli na po namin nung nalaman eh. Nagsara po yung mall nang pinatanggal na po yung mga ice cream. Ano na ano March 16, eh wala na pong biyahe noon eh paano pa makakauwi at wala na pong perang pamasay pag-uwi. Kaya po talagang sa palaran na lang po ang buhay sa Maynila ngayon kaya sana po matulungan pa po yung ibang kababayan namin dun sa Maynila na makauwi. Talaga po ang hirap talaga. Marami na pong umiiyak yung may mga anak po nakakaawa kasi wala na pong pambiling gatas, pambiling diaper. Yung kinakain po nila kulang, ang relief naman po doon sa isang linggo, minsan isa lang. Paano naman po yung magtatagal sa isang linggo ang, ang pinabibigay sa Maynila? Kaya po sana po talaga matulungan po lahat ni Congressman Elre at saka ni Gob Mix Villaperte. Napakabusilag po talaga ng puso ng magtatay na pumabigyan ng puhunan para pumakaumpisa po sa probinsya ng kahit pumaliit na negosyo. Yun lang po sana eh. Kasi po talaga ang hirap eh. Ang kopra po ngayon, kahalos hindi nabilhin. Yun lang po ang pinakikitaan namin dun sa karamuan eh. Kopra. Kaya po dapat po matulungan po kami kahit po kaunting puhunan po pang negosyo lamang. Uh, Darin, can you also play the one in the construction worker, the video, uh, with your indulgence? Ako po, isang nagtatrabaho lang sa Nubi Isiagapan. Uh, dalawa po kami ng anak ko. Uh, ganito po yon. Uh, doon kami inabot ng lockdown sa Tarlac. Galing po kami sa Nubi Isiagapan. Nagbakasyon po kami doon sa kapatid ko. Ngayon, anong nangyari? Nabalitaan ko po na ganito nga ang tulong ni Gob, Meg. Kaya salamat po, Gob sa tulong mo sa amin ng mga construction workers sa Maynila na gusto pong umuwi ginawaan nyo no paraan para makauwi kami kaso nga lang po walang wala kami ng anak ko naglakad po kami galing tarlak hanggang dao pampangka bago po kami kinawaan ng anak ko nga nadaanan kami ng sasakyan pinsakay po kami hanggang kubaw pagdating po sa kubaw doon na po kami nagantay ng Raymond para makasakay po papunta dito sa Bicol para makauwi po sa pamilya. Kulang-kulang po dalawang taon na walaan po kami ng trabaho. Wala halos, wala kami makain ng anak ko. Dahil wala po kami na ipon kasi magkaano lang naman po ang kita namin sa trabaho. Halos po lang pag ipadala sa pamilya. At higit sa lahat, sobra-sobra po ang pagpasalamat ko na kahit pa paano nakauwi kami dito sa Bicol. Ang kagustuhan namin ng anak ko, saga nga lang kalalakad ng kulang-kulang pitong oras na linakad namin ng anak ko. Naawa na nga po ako, Sir Ma'am, sa anak ko. 
dahil nararamdaman ko na pagod na pagod na sa kalalakad kaso nga lang wala talaga po magawa nagdaraan naman kami ng sasakyan hindi man kami tinitigilan dahil siyempre alam nila na bawal magsakay kasi hulihin po sila ng mga checkpoint kaya sabi ko sa anak ko magsaga tayo maglakad kagusan na dito pero walang problema ang importante makauwi po tayo sa atin at manatili tayo doon ng sama-sama tayo ng kapatid mo mama mo kahit ano mangyari magutom na sila magugutom din tayo yun lang ang akin kaya pinilit po namin na maglakad talaga ito nga uuwi kami sa bahay na kahit piso wala ko may abot sa kanila kaya naiyak lang talaga ako sa sobrang hirap na dinanas namin kaya iyan ang sinasabi ko sino man may awa may puso na pwedeng tumulong sa amin sana tulungan man kami para kahit pa paano pagdating sa amin meron man lang kami makain kung ano man ang mga kailangan sa loob ng pamamahay namin dahil walang wala talaga kami na ikon sa tagal ko ng trabaho sa Manila aanim, aanim na mahigit ka taon walang wala talaga ko na ikon ayan ang gusto ko ulitin ko po nasasabi na sana mayroon maawa mayroon maano sa puso na tulungan kami lahat nga na wala ng trabaho kasi kawawa na ba yung mga pamilya may pinapakain talaga kaya yun lang ang So, so basically, uh, us in government, uh, this is basically just a symbol of what's happening nationwide. Uh, in Camarinisur, for example, there's over 10,000 people who want to go home. I'm sure in Samar, in uh, Mindanao, uh, this is happening. Uh, they went to Manila uh, looking for a greener pasture, looking for a job, because in the provinces, uh, there's really no oppor uh, employment opportunities. There's no factories. There's nothing. So what happens after the COVID is um, they have to come home. And uh, some people are they're still there, stranded, hungry. So this is just uh, you know, uh, a picture of what's happening. So I will continue my presentation. But I believe, uh, Darren, can you, ano, the silver lining? Ano, for, ano? <laughs> so I believe there is, a, however, a silver lining to, the, to our people's despair and suffering. We should be solution-oriented uh, not, and not focus on problems. Next slide. So while the situation looks grim, these construction workers and other workers can also become a symbol of hope, home, and harvest. Now is the time for the government to implement the Balik Provincia program so that the exodus of these construction workers and other workers from the national capital region going back to their home is not a journey of failure but a return of hope. The program aims to give their harvest by providing them with jobs through shovel-ready infrastructure projects. Next, please. <laughs> the Balik Provincia program will not only spur economic growth in provinces, but also provide employment opportunities to people like Marlon and others who do not need to leave their home. Next. The Balik Provincia program is now being implemented in Camarines Sur. We were inspired by what the speaker said, what Senator Bongo said, and it, this has been talked about the past decade. That's why we're pushing for federalism and others. That's why we think now is the time to implement this. We provide buses to pick up stranded workers in NCR so that they can return to their homes in their respective provinces. We provide them with food, water, blanket, mattress, soaps, hygiene kits to sustain them in the quarantine facilities for 14 days. Because before we integrate them to the community, of course, we have to follow the rules of the 14-day quarantine. Next. <laughs> Next, please. So this is what we do. We uh, pick them up. We even give them, ex uh, we, uh, uh, with, uh, we also thank the Department of Labor and Employment under Sec Bello. Uh, we started the Oplen uh, Balik Provincia or Balik Kamsur by uh, bringing stranded workers back to their uh, to Kamsur, and we give them the Tupad BKBK program. So at least, uh, you know, when they go home to their families, they can work for 10 days and get paid under the Tupad program. At least meron silang pera. Uh, because ito yung mga taong uh, uh, no work, no pay, isang kahit isang tuka, uh, pag kumita, bayad sa utang. Uh, at least uh, with the Tupad gro uh, program under the Dole and under our president, uh, they have something. Uh, to give to our uh, when they go home. Next, please. 
So the plan of the province, I think, which other LGUs are doing now, is to implement a province-wide food for work program for these displaced workers and and and, and the unemployed next. So what we plan to do, what we want to do is, you know, do do programs that will benefit the people in the barangay, uh, such as this. They will do path walks. Uh, this is in the coastal area of Karamoan. Uh, this is the road leading to the school. When it's raining, uh, uh, so you know they, they ask us to uh, to uh, do a path walk or a road. But uh, what we plan to do after the when we're when they're already allowed to work. Is really implement this, uh, you know, uh, province-wide down to the Sitio Barangay level, so they have work. Next, we can also do canal drainage cleanup, which can be done replicated all over the country. Next, tree planting, food for work tree planting. Next, I'm sure other, I'm sure other LGUs have more creative ideas. Uh, I'm just presenting this because while the LGUs uh, nationwide are uh, having the creativity, the initiative to do this, uh, we feel that this is not sustainable. We, we feel that the national government should partner with the local government and implement a nationwide extensive job creation program that would be felt down to the farthest barangays. And what we propose are projects to be implemented should be shovel ready. Yung mabilis may implement agad asap. Next. So this shovel-ready infrastructure project shall be funded through a proposed legislation, which we will, we will file on Monday. It's called the COVID-19 Unemployment Reduction Economic Stimulus, or CURES Act of 2020. The objective of the CURES Act of 2020 is to create more jobs, which will upspring to infrastructure projects that will lead to the recovery of the economy. With the CURES Act of 2020 and the Enhanced Build, Build, Build program of our president, after COVID restrictions are lifted, the government will be able to recover and build a more resilient economy and provide jobs to our people. As uh, Secretary Kalchua has, has said, the BBB will remain as one of the key priorities of this government even post-pandemic. It has highest multiplier effects, so the rest of the economy will benefit. So based on this, uh, based on this fact, uh, we want to propose uh, the Cures Act, which I will present to you. Next, please. It's called the Cures Act COVID-19 Unemployment Reduction Economic Stimulus. Next. Basically, uh, right now, uh, the national government, which we're thankful for, under the DSWD, under the Department of Agriculture, under the DOLE, <laughs> has actually uh, given social amelioration for, uh, programs uh, for the DSWD, the SAP, the AIX, under the DA, yung Farmer Assistance Program, under the DOLE, yung TUPAD, and CAMP. Uh, which is really a good idea. But long term, next. Long term really uh, is, uh, if you ask the people, what do you prefer? Do you want a dole out or gusto mo ba ng trabaho? So basically, while dole out is good as an initial uh, first step, the immediate, medium, and long term goal really is to provide jobs for people. Because as proven in all uh, economic uh, uh, books and what the economy say, dollars really are not sustainable. And it is necessary that the government must come up to the economic stimulus package that assures sustainable employment in an improved economy. And unemployment can be addressed by investment on public infrastructures, which are shovel ready, which is our proposal. Next. So as we know, because of the COVID, business has closed, uh, unemployment has risen, reduction of public consumption, uh, this is what's happening. This is, these are the problems that we have to tackle. Next. The impact on the economy, they're projecting a zero to negative growth, higher unemployment rate, and possibly increase in the price of basic commodities. Next. Most affected sectors are the transport, construction, storage, retail, communication, tourism, wholesale, and retail trade. Next. Based on the study as given to us by the construction industry, as of now, over 1.3 million people have been displaced because of the ECQ. And uh, it's mostly because of the suspension of government infra projects. Next. So what we've done is, what happened in the past so that it can, be, it can guide us on what to do in the future or now? 
uh, we've studied what happened in the Great Depression, uh, how the economies uh, were able to uh, recover, what happened in the post-World War II uh, era, the Great Recession, Asian crisis. So this is next. <laughs> so basically, basically in all countries, it's re resounding that public works or public spending through infrastructure is really the stimulus that will provide jobs and will help bounce back the economy. For example, in the United States, they enacted the Public Works Economic Act of 1965, primarily to increase public spending to expand economic opportunities and strengthen public infrastructure. Next. <laughs> the Marshall Plan or the European Recovery Plan after World War II focused on uh, basically agriculture, industrial development, and infrastructure. Next. Uh, during the subprime mortgage crisis of the United States, under the administration of President Obama, they uh, enacted an American Recovery and Investment Act, basically to create jobs, provide investments, uh, which was really uh, targeted on infrastructure, agriculture, health, and human services. Next. <laughs> During after the World War II, London uh, implemented the Greater London Plan. Uh, it was uh, basically a plan that developed townships outside of London, uh, something like the Balik Bubincha program that we're trying to propose now, which led really uh, to economic growth because it trickled down uh, to areas where there was no economic development. Next. Japan uh, implemented the National Income Doubling Plan in 1960, basically to raise the uh, employment and living standards of their people, uh, to keep prices stable, and uh, it was really aimed at expanding public works in housing and roads and increasing social security of the citizens. Next. Marshall Plan, as mentioned earlier, was also implemented by the German government after World War II. Next. In Indonesia, uh, 2009, during the financial crisis, uh, this uh, allocated 12.2 uh, trillion uh, Indonesian uh, rupiah for the infrastructure development. Next. They also had uh, infrastructure investment and employment creation, which targeted basically uh, the youth uh, and created over uh, 250,000 jobs in the public work sector. Next. India also implemented 2008-2009 uh, during the crisis, uh, global crisis, uh, basically focused on public-private partnerships on uh, public infrastructure. Next. In the Philippines, uh, after the World War II, uh, they, uh, they uh, enacted an act appropriating uh, a certain 25 million pesos at that time for public works, basically focused on construction of provincial city roads and bridges. Next. <laughs> 1948, after the World War, Philippines uh, setting, uh, they also uh, appropriated, uh, uh, enacted a law uh, specifically geared for public works creating schools, hospitals, market sites, which I think is applicable at this time, uh, 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 post-COVID or even during COVID. Next. <laughs> 1954, an another uh, uh, law was passed in the Philippines for basically for economic development. Uh, basically, this was the issuance of the bonds for the purpose of financing public works and self-liquidating projects. Next. 1962, Emergency Employment Act, create employment uh, opportunities for our people and to develop income in rural areas, which is what we really need now. Next. In 2009, uh, then President GMA uh, enacted, uh, uh, signed an executive order providing for employment intervention to save and create jobs as part of economic resiliency. Next. So basically, based on uh, all of uh, the foregoing uh, recessions, uh, after the World War, depressions, uh, basically, uh, it's very clear that government spending is key in stimulating economic growth and infrastructure as part of that spending. Next. <laughs> so basically, economics and uh, you know experiences prove that infrastructure is a critical factor for enabling private business and individuals to put goods and services more efficiently, 
in increased infrastructure spending leads to higher economic growth. It will uh, generate businesses. It will uh, promote uh, economic stimulus and uh, many more. Next. Investments in infrastructure also clearly will help stimulate the economy, when, especially when consumers and businesses are not spending. Right now, ang, uh, the people right now, walang pera, at kung meron mang pera, of course, they would want to save that. So really, uh, now is the time for government to spend money and promote uh, public spending through infrastructure because it will stimulate uh, job creation and labor demand. Next. It's often been said in the economic cluster, all our economists, that the infrastructure definitely has a multiplier effect. For every peso you spend, it has a multiplier effect of around 3.5%. So if you spend, for example, 100 billion pesos, the multiplier effect of that is uh, 350 billion pesos. The labor component is easily 30% or easily 100 billion. So this is really what we need right now. Next. Next. So be next. So basically, uh, what what's the data? Infrastructure in the Philippines, basically based on the PSA, as of 2019, was really the main driver of growth for our economy, and it consists of around a 9.3 percent growth rate. So based on uh, the presentation of Chairman Lucy, uh, uh, she she uh, she basically presented the picture that in our country, almost 40 percent uh, work in agriculture and almost 10% in agriculture in uh, construction. So basically, if you just target uh, agriculture and in, in, uh, construction, basically 50% of our people can be, uh, that already comprises 50% of our people. So this is really the target area that we want to focus on in recovery. Next. So, you know, uh, sectors most affected, construction, health services, agriculture, wearing apparel. Next, next. Next, please. Next, please. So, the, so basically, uh, based, uh, I was inspired by the Hilos One app. <laughs> and basically, what target sectors do we want to uh, benefit from the Cures app? So I've, I've laid out, uh, we heal as one, basically, focus on H, health, E, education, A, agriculture, L, for local roads, uh, infrastructure, and livelihood. Next. So basically, we want shovel-ready, implementable, simple projects that are attainable that will directly benefit the people. So, you know, if you want to do a cube stimulus package based on the Cures Act, let's develop barangay health centers, daycare centers, barangay nutrition centers, rural health centers, uh, municipal hospital, which is really needed because the 2021 budget or any other budget at this point should be geared towards health. health. Saving uh, the people, uh, saving lives of our people is at utmost priority. But uh, admittedly, our hospital to bed ratio is very low. It does not meet the World Health Organization standards. So now's the time. Let's put money in the barangays, which will be directly felt by the people. And by constructing them, automatically it will create jobs. Next. <laughs> and uh, as mentioned in the previous slide, uh, we want to promote digital infrastructure also in the health sector. Dapat meron na tayong telemedicine. We should have an electronic health record system. So, so that if ever there's an, another pandemic or another uh, uh, case that we have to tackle, maayos na ang data natin. Sino ba ang may high blood? Sino ba ang may uh, pneumonia? Sino ba ang may sakit sa puso? Uh, this, this should be part of uh, developing health infrastructure, which is digital infrastructure telemedicine or electric or developing an electronic health record system part of this of course is in uh, in uh, making sure that our people are healthy dapat meron tayong potable water system wastewater sewage treatment infrastructures next so just to let you you know when uh, when uh, president obama implemented the american recovery and investment act they started developing health centers all over the country. So these are, these are the fruits of that act. So in the Philippine setting, basically, I have a proposal. We've, I've asked an American designer for free to design you know, future health centers that are afford affordable, but is uh, also nice, but implementable. Next slide. 
So, you know, this is these are our proposals. Uh, these are the proposed design for rural health units, barangay health centers that are easily implementable. Magandang design, low cost, but it's properly ventilated. If you can see the design, magandang ventilation, it's just made of CHB, hollow block, steel trusses. Uh, but can you imagine all barangays, even CHOs having this? And this can be replicated also. This can also be a design of a school. This can be design of a multi-purpose building. Uh, in, can you imagine the national government implementing this type down to the barangay, down to the sitio? It will generate jobs. It will create uh, employment. It will also uh, no, um, tackle the issue on health and other uh, problems. Next. So again, the second part is education. Because of the new normal, uh, dati na po tayong may uh, classroom shortage na I think over 30,000. And because of the new normal, yung dating classroom size of 40 or 45, dapat 15 to 20 na lang. E dati na tayo may classroom shortage. Now with the new normal of physical distancing, we need more. So we really, we really need to double or triple our education budget. We should build more schools, libraries, comfort rooms uh, for health reasons and hygiene reasons, barangay learning centers, technical vocation learning centers, and we should build roads, access roads that leads to the schools. And most especially now, with the new normal, uh, we've been proposed, I proposed this five years ago, digital education really is a must right now, uh, especially with the new normal. Even without the COVID, other countries are do, were doing it. So it's about time that we really need to focus. Uh, we feel that the establishment of digital education in public schools should be executed immediately. Next. In line with this, uh, there's a bill pending now that uh, House Bill 1249, Institutionalization of Digital Technology, was filed 2016, which was refiled <laughs> again uh, this 18th Congress. I think now is the time to really promote digital education in public education. And this can be partly, this can be funded in the Cures Act. Thank you. Next. Agriculture is key because in any economic development, agriculture should really not be left out. If we have an enhanced build, 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 we should have an enhanced plant, plant, plant. Now is the time for the Philippines to be self-sufficient. Food is important at this time. We felt it during the lockdown. We should protect our farmers. We should Now is the best time to build post-harvest facilities, farm-to-market roads, bagsakal centers, provide, uh, uh, also assist provincial, municipal, barangay fish ports, uh, ito po importante talaga. Because uh, if you go to the provinces, if you ask any mayor, congressman, uh, dalawa, halos da, dalawa, tatlo lang naman ang trabaho sa probinsya ng mga malalayong lugar. Nagtatanim sila, nagtatrabaho sa gobyerno, police, teacher, o sa munisipyo, or construction. So agriculture really is a key part. Now is the time. Diba? Ngayon nga, magugulat ka, marami pong mga innovative na local government unit bumibili ng uh, gulay sa Baguio at binidistribute sa kanilang, kanilang lugar uh, bilang pagkain, nakakatulong rin sa mga farmer. But why, now is the best time really to put up bagsakan centers. Diba? Kung may uh, sa Baguio or sa Benguet, gulay ang kinatanim nila, Nueva Ecija, Isabela, Camarines, or rice and corn, dapat, uh, dapat yung linkages now from farmer direct to the table should be set up. Uh, this, this should be the new normal. Next. Again, uh, satellite markets, abattoirs, packaging facilities. We should have barangay agriculture training centers, nurseries, agri-fishery research and development facilities. Of course, drainage, small water impounding units na ginagawa na, dapat i-triplicate. Mga irrigation systems for flood-prone flood uh, agriculture areas. Of course, alternative livelihood facilities. Importante po yan. Next. Uh, as part of the heal, uh, importante, local roads and infrastructure. Bakit po? Ang mandate po ng DPD or WH is when they have a budget, ang napopondohan lang po are the national primary and secondary roads. Uh, but ang national primary uh, roads, aabutin uh, lang yata ng over almost 40,000 kilometers. However, based on research, ang mga local roads sa barangay, sa probinsya, munisipyo, over 200,000 kilometers. So yan, yan dapat ang bigyan ng atensyon. Ito po ang gustong i-focus ng uh, bill na to na dapat shovel ready, mararamdaman sa malalayong lugar at talagang magtitrickle down sa kanila at siguro dapat i-require natin ang magtatrabaho 
galing sa lokalidad para talaga mag-generate. So, we should focus more on provincial, municipal, barangay roads, more than national roads. We should promote access roads, open up, open up roads, <laughs> which will connect to communities, health facilities, schools, businesses, na dapat talaga ito ang kailangan. Then of course, continuous construction, repair, improvement of potable water system and water irrigation system na kailang-kailangan po ng ating mga kababayan. Next. So again, ano ba ang sinasabi natin shovel ready? <laughs> Hindi na kailangan ng feasibility study. Alam mo kung gagawa tayo ng dalawang bilyon na tulay, mararamdaman lang yan sa syudad. Gagawa tayo ng tulay sa Maynila na kailangan rin po. Pero ang kailangan talaga natin ngayon yung wala ng feasibility study, uh, implementable na within the next, next 60 to 90 days, dahil yan talaga ang kailangan ng tao. So when this bill hopefully will get passed, yam dapat, shovel ready, small scale basic infrastructure na ramdam ng mga tao. Ano po yan? Internal roads, walkways, pathways, footbridges, drainage, box culvert, retaining walls, sea walls, yan po ang mga kailangan. Next. So yun na nga, uh, infrastructure within market grounds, the community, as mentioned earlier, water and sanitation is important. Uh, it's being done by the United Nations in their recovery efforts worldwide. Uh, why not do it now that uh, we need it? Next. Of course, important, the new normal talaga. We should have communication lifelines. Dapat, ang proposal ko dito, dapat in the barangay na walang internet, maglagay ang gobyerno ng mga digital online kiosks na pwede silang uh, mag-transact ng negosyo sa gobyerno, uh, e-governance, uh, merong uh, online uh, system, uh, may infrastructure na, na dapat kasama na rin ng Cure Act, ito na tawag na digital infrastructure, na simple lang, na hindi naman bilyon ng cost. Kailangan lang siguro magbigay tayo ng mga barangay digital kiosk na pwede silang mag-access, may uh, Wi-Fi, na pwede naman uh, salpakan ng uh, USB, simple lang, na yan ang kailangan sa school, sa barangay, na part of this proposal. Next, please. <laughs> yung ELPO, ang ating gobyerno po ngayon, meron na pong tinatawag na Sustainable Livelihood Program. Uh, gusto natin, dapat i-enhance po yan yung programa ng DSWD. Dapat dagdagan po natin ang pondo yan uh, para lalong uh, mapalawak po ang livelihood opportunities, lalong-lalo na ngayon na ang tao hirap. So, uh, meron pa tayong proposal, dapat magkaroon ng enhanced to pad program sa DOLE. Napaka-effective po yan. Uh, pagandahin po natin ang uh, guidelines, dagdagan natin ang pondo. At meron rin po nga proposal ang uh, DOLE, yung tinatawag na Barangay Emergency Employment Program, na napakaganda po. So kung ito po lahat ng tinatawag natin na health, education, agriculture, local roads infrastructure at livelihood program, palagay ko uh, malalampasan po natin itong pagsubok na to. Hindi na kaabuti ng uh, taon to. Palagay ko kung uh, we pass this law into law at mangyari to, automatic, mabilis po ang ating recovery. Next, please. Ito po yung tinatawag na Barangay Emergency Employment Program ng DOLE, uh, which targets uh, to uh, benefit uh, the formal and informal sectors. Uh, meron silang programa that will give cash assistance based on a work scheme, maximum period of three months. Next, please. So again, uh, DDTI can also provide assistance. Sasama natin to sa batas, tumapasa, provide access to credit and financing. Meron na po silang mga ginagawa niyan ngayon. Pero dapat siguro institutionalize natin sa bilang sa isama na sa batas. Ponduhan natin, pagandahin po ang proseso. Huwag natin pahirapan ng tao. Dapat siguro ang guideline, tatlong proseso lang. Huwag ng isang page na proseso para talagang makabenefit. At maganda naman po ang ginagawa ng ating Secretary Mon Lopez uh, kailangan lang siguro tulungan ng Kongreso na maponduan pa ang kanyang mga magagandang programa. Next, please. <laughs> so, in conclusion po, uh, atin mga colleagues, members of the media, basically, uh, we want basically to create jobs through uh, infrastructure and other forms of uh, public spending. We ask that uh, our colleagues to uh, author and push this uh, proposed Cures Act of 2020 because we believe that it will help bounce back the economy since, since it has been proven that infrastructure is the backbone of economic growth. Increased public spending on infrastructure will definitely lead to jobs and when the people have jobs, we will have peace, order, and a sustainable economy. Maraming salamat po. Magandang hapon po sa inyo lahat. Maraming maraming salamat po to our uh, very, very handsome, energetic, and uh, vibrant <laughs> speaker, Elway. Just Mabalos.
Maraming pong salamat sa malasaki po niyo ni um, uh, Kong uh, Lucy Torres Gomez of uh, the uh, Social Amelioration Cluster. We'd like to thank our secretaries. I understand our DSWD Secretary Rolando Bautista is on board now, as well as Secretary Bebo Pedro and uh, Secretary Juan Lopez. We thank you for your patience. The um, uh, presentations of um, Kong Lucy and uh, Deputy Speaker LA is a culmination of a series of um, cluster or subcommittee hearings. Kaya pag nagsasalita po si um, uh, DSL at saka si Ma'am Lucy, they are actually speaking for hundreds of um, uh, representatives. Kaya pinakita nga na ni, you know, ni DSL Ray, yung um, some um, snippets ng uh, nangyayari po sa kanilang uh, mismong distrito. Pero sa totoo lang po, yun po ang nagaganap po sa buong bansa. Kaya marami sa kalang pasensya po ninyo to listen. Kaya yung mga sinasabi nila, hindi lang po lang sa distrito nila, o kung, uh, kung saan lang nila nakuha itong mga reports o dinownload nila itong mga graphs o yung mga ano, charts, ito talaga ang nagagalap. Itong magkalanasan po ng lahat ng mga kongresista. And before I um, introduce Secretary um, uh, Rolando Bautista, I'd like to acknowledge the, um, uh, the attendance and the participation, uh, although they're observing the uh, proceedings, our um, Deputy Speaker Dinan Hernandez from uh, Colorado, uh, our um, Deputy Speaker from um, uh, Barangay Anahaw in Pampanga, Congressman um, Dong uh, Gonzalez, our um, uh, Chairman on the Committee on Agriculture, Congressman Martin Vega from Quezon, our Chair for the Persons with Disabilities, Congresswoman um, Lourdes Arroyo from Negros, our um, uh, very, very, uh, another very, very um, uh, uh, energetic and a very, very uh, active uh, congressman, our chair on people participation, congressman woman, Rita Robes, and our deputy majority floor leader, uh, congressman, uh, congressman Ria Farinas. Uh, we cannot have this without another um, uh, member of our uh, minority uh, uh, floor leadership, our um, uh, senior deputy minority floor leader, congresswoman uh, Jeanette Perrin, who is also the co-chair of our health cluster. Uh, Mr. Speaker, at this point, I'd like to introduce to you our uh, secretary of um, the DSWD, Secretary Rolando Bautista. He's also the man of the hour. Nabubugbog siya at kasi Secretary Bebot Bello dito sa ating um, social amelioration um, concerns. Secretary Rolando Bautista of the Department of Social Welfare and Development hails from the Gillian La Union. He was previously the commanding general of the Philippine Army, and from May 2016 to March 2017, he was the commander of the Presidential Security Group. Secretary Rolando Joselito Bautista graduated from the Military Academy in 1985 and belongs to the Class Sandiwa. He was a recipient of two Distinguished Service Stars, an Outstanding Achievement Medal, two Gawad Sakaularan Awards, Bronze Bros Medals, 17 Military Merit Medals, and 13 Military Commendation Medals during his service as a member of the Armed Forces of the Philippines. When the Commission on Appointments confirmed his appointment as Secretary of the DSWD, it was considered an advantage to put him as the head of the DSWD because his life as a soldier allowed him to experience firsthand the problems of marginalized groups. Indeed, being once an Army Chief, he was also able to spend time in the far-flung areas and is most knowledgeable about the poor and underprivileged. His DSWD family describes him as sobrang humble, at sobrang bayit, simple, may puso, at organized. We in the Congress are witnesses to that. Uh, he is the kind of a leader that the department needs, one who has come a compassionate heart for the poor, the vulnerable, the disadvantaged, and the marginalized. Welcome po sa ating meeting, Secretary Rolando Joselito Bautista. We are ready to listen to your presentation. Honorable Speaker Honorable Honorable Joining me today are the members of the DSWD Executive Committee. Some are present here in this hall, others are on 
tiene cuatro cabezas. So, we will share with you my presentation. The purpose of this presentation is to apprise the honorable members of the House of Representatives on the implementation of such incidents in COVID-19 crisis. So may I just ask if our slide is on the screen? Um, Mr. Chair, um, yes. Mr. Chair, this is Congressman Sarmiento. Yeah. It's uh, it seems that uh, we have an audio problem. On, uh, Actually, I'm um, Chairman Egai. We are in contact with the DSWD. They're trying to rectify that as we speak. Well, thank you so much, and, uh, Chairman Thank Egai. you so much. Uh, I'd like to acknowledge the um, uh, attendance also of um, our Chairman from of the Transportation Committee, the gentleman from Western Samar, um, uh, Congressman Edgar Mary Sarmiento the uh, congressman from Western Samar. Maram Salamat. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Okay. So, uh, I would never have to ask to continue. The outline of my presentation is a show. So, to start with the self-implementation, the COVID death crisis poses a great threat to the biological, psychosocial, and social economic well being of our community. As the lead implementing agency of social protection, the DSWD has not only taken part in carrying out the social elimination program of the staff, but also modified some of these failure programs to be responsive to the concerns and issues of the poor in vulnerable and disadvantaged. Hence, I will be presenting the status of the social communication program to this community, along with the initiatives conducted in adjusting our regular program. The Department of Social Welfare and Development has received a total of 196 billion pesos for the emergency strategy of staff. The first class was duly received on April 2, which amounted to 100 billion pesos. The 96 billion peso budget for the second class was received on April 17. As is stated by RA 11469, or the Bayaniha to be as one of 18 million eligible families are to be supported by the social communication. The breakdown of the 80 million families is as follows 4.3 million for these families, 13.5 million for the land for these low income families, and 90,000 families for the transportation, network paper service, and public utility drivers in NCR. With the mentioned breakdown of beneficiaries, Around 100 billion pesos is allocated for the first class. 80 percent of the 100 billion pesos budget is allocated for four keys. 81 percent or 80.3 billion pesos is designated, is designated for land for keys, and 1 percent for the 90,000 families of the transportation. 53.8 billion pesos was received by the identified 10.1 million families. 37.1 billion pesos of which 
has been already received by the 6.2 million non Portuguese families. Meanwhile, 3.7 million Portuguese families were provided with a total of 16.3 million pesos worth of emergency subsidy. Lastly, 323.3 million pesos was given to the 40,480 families of the transportation group. As of 30 April 2020, 10.1 million families have been served. 3.7 million families for properties, 6.3 million families for the non properties, and 40,418 families for the transportation group. This data was reflected in the reports as of 30 April. To identify the progress of the number of benefits that have been served over the last month, the table contains the served number of families versus the target number is shown. Again, we would like to reiterate that 85% of the Portuguese families have been served, 47% of the non Portuguese have already received the emergency cash subsidy, and 45% of the 90,000 transportation group families have been given aid. For the budget utilization, 88% of the allocated budget for fees has been used, 44% of the 80.8 of the 80 billion pesos was provided to the non for fees low income families, and 45% of this spent to support the 40,418 families of the transportation. To understand, to better understand how the social community program was implemented, allow me to present the timeline of the overall participation of the set program. As I have mentioned, we have received the first grant from April 2, which composed of the 51% of the budgetary requirement from the Department of the Project and Management. The DSWD has distributed the emergency subsidy to the following day, seeing the reduction need to distribute the final financial aid as soon as possible time. 84% of the target number of Portuguese households have received a total of amount of 16.3 million pesos. On the same day, 1,250 clients have provided assistance for COVID 19 related concerns. Using the regular assistance to the Global Crisis Protection Fund. Field offices of the department were dedicated most of the time in ensuring that the memorandum agreement was signed by the local city safety of the avenue to ensure that the amount of the task to be properly allocated to right to the shadows as the field of the avenue to distribute the task of the formally and legally recognized by holding an agreement with it. On April 8, 2020, 45% of the 90,000 transport group beneficiaries were provided an emergency subsidy amounting to 323.3 million pesos. Three days after, 52,580 low income non Portuguese families receive the cash assistance, signifying the process of coming to terms with the provision of the MOA and the transferring of funds that they accomplish. As such, on April 15, the Department to our field offices has formed an agreement on staff with 1,987 cities and municipalities and a total of 1,138 MGUs to provide the funds amounting to 65 million pesos. Today, 1,568 have signed a moment with the SWD and 80.8 billion have been transferred to the LDUs. On April 17, we have received 49% of the budgetary requirement for the second tax from the LDUs. Now we proceed to the safety nets. According to the United Nations Social Workers, an 
playing games in the following games. Considering that the national capital region is one of the hotspots for COVID-19, doubled by congestion with families coming from provinces with the lack of economic opportunity in the rural area, lack of access to basic support services in the provinces, the guidelines of Balik to give support is being resisted, the creation of an interagency community and assistant packages are looked into big black willing families in the respective families. The DSWD has issued guidance on the protection, prevention, safety of residents and personnel of the central residential care facilities regarding the COVID-19 health crisis. This is to ensure that each residential care facility has its contingency plan in the prevention and protection of the residents and personnel based on the protocol set by the Department of in the light of the recent events, the department has promoted health initiatives for the welfare of the members of the DSWD family, such as dormitories, transportation support, sanitation, mobile homes, and subsidized means are ensured to provide further help for our staff. Temporary dormitory personnel, scale of course, and time timings are available. Alter the routes and pick up points two courses and approve 146 day pass for equipment of work from home employees. Lastly, subsidized meals to DSWD personnel starting from March 20 are provided. The average number of meals per week for breakfast is uh, 3,000. 212 for breakfast and 8,171 meals for lunch. Shuttle services to transport the SWD schedule workforce for the residents to set up the admin service. Regular disinfection and switching activities in all offices on all weekends of March and April are implemented. The checking of body temperature of all employees and visitors entering the DSWD making are strictly monitored. Also, alcohol and sanitizer search in the body glass, elevator, open food, and DSWD making are cleansed. Installation of double dry partition and crisis intervention to facility payout and plastic partition in the community area. Of social workers and clients. Mobile phones with SIM card and code for the operation of the center are also provided. With all this, the Department of Social Welfare Development is transferred in advocating for the rights and well being of the poor, vulnerable, and disadvantaged. That ends our presentation. Maraming salamat po at magandang hapon po sa atin. Thank you, thank you very much, um, uh, Secretary. Um, uh, we could have appreciated a better presentation because we could not enjoy your uh, slide presentation in, in the next scroll, but we'll bet, have better coordination with your staff. They can actually provide us with the um, PowerPoint presentation so that we can control it from our end. But nonetheless, um, uh, as the uh, presentation progressed, the audio got a bit better. But um, thank you so much, uh, Mr. Secretary. I know that... Um, you have uh, been at the forefront of um, uh, this um, uh, social amelioration program. And uh, I know it's uh, very, very challenging and very difficult, but I'm glad that you were able to listen to uh, Deputy Speaker El Rey Villafuerte and um, uh, Kong, uh, Lucy Torres Holmes, our co-chairs of Clusters uh, Social Amelioration. Kay, yung mga sinasabi nila ay talaga yan ang distillation or kung baga that is a... Uh, 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 you know, an ag uh, aggregation of all the concerns of all the hundreds of congressmen that are getting feedback on a daily basis. So, maraming maraming salamat po uh, to our, uh, no, to our um, uh, good uh, secretary. Uh, the speaker's message is that um, we have to work as closely as possible with one another 
because um, it's only through coordination and partnership between the House of Representatives and the executive that our president can definitely win this war against the COVID. And as we heal as one, we will win as one. Kaya po, maraming maraming salamat. And uh, masan mo po all the um, contributions, support. Uh, just hopefully you continue to be patient and mindful of our suggestions and recommendations to make the delivery of services, particularly the social immunization program that I use spearhead more effective and more meaningful sa lahat ng mga constituency po natin. Maraming, maraming salamat po, Mr. Secretary, sa presentation nyo. And thank you for being here. Maraming, maraming salamat. We will now have our uh, next um, uh, esteemed um, uh, guest. Uh, he is none other than the Secretary of the Department of uh, Labor and Employment. That is um, none other than Secretary Sylvester Bebot Bellio. Uh, Secretary um, uh, Bellio of the Department of Labor and Employment also serves on the concurrent capacity as the presidential advisor on the peace process. President Duterte has bestowed upon him the task of negotiating lasting peace based on justice to lead the charge to end the endo or the illegal contractualization of workers. He's a longtime public servant having served the government under four Philippine presidents and in various capacities. He was twice appointed as Secretary of the Department of Justice under the Aquino and Ramos administrations and elected as a member of the House of Representatives during the 16th Congress representing the party list 1 DAP, Unang Barangay Ating Pandarin, and he also served as Solicitor General for two years from September 1996 to February 1998. Secretary Bebel graduated with distinction from Ateneo de Manila University College of Law. He is a businessman, a peace worker, and a human rights advocate. In the past, he also served as President and Chief Executive Officer of the Philippine National Oil Company, Development and Management Corporation, the General Manager and Chief Executive Officer of the Philippine Reclamation Authority, and Presidential Advisor on New Government Centers. We have none other than Secretary Bellio to make his presentation. Secretary Bellio, are you on board? Sure, it is for Lee. This is uh, Sochi as a under secretary of the Department of Labor and Employment. We thank you for the kind uh, for the kind words uh, in the presentation. But uh, today, as we mark the 180th Labor Day celebration, may we kindly uh, request that this uh, be and that I'd be given the opportunity mm -hmm. to speak on his behalf, which is very important for me. Okay, we understand that. We saw the good secretary earlier on the program, but we understand that schedule. So please go ahead with the uh, presentation of the good secretary, please. Thank you. And I, I would, I'd like to thank the leadership of the House of Representatives and the Social Amelioration Cluster for inviting the Dole Today, uh, again, this is today is Labor Day, and it's not only auspicious that we, uh, we celebrate today, but it's uh, we believe that uh, for the House of Representatives to call this meeting, especially on the social amelioration, it's a show of solidarity and uh, tangible action. So we'd like to congratulate you for convening this meeting, uh, uh, Mr. Chair. Also, uh, we would like to uh, state for the record that we fully support the presentations that have so far been presented, particularly by uh, Congresswoman Lucy Torres Gomez. Uh, we would like to uh, underscore in particular her point on uh, the newly poor. We would like to say with humility and with open eyes that we, we do affirm that because of the uh, COVID-19, this pandemic, marami po talaga ang nalaglag sa laylayan and therefore this has expanded and enlarged the newly poor. Not only the those belonging to the, the poor, and the low-income families, but also with respect to the additional uh, low-middle income families are now considered part of the newly poor, uh, Mr. Chair. We, we, 
we also want to underscore what uh, Deputy Speaker El Rey Villafuerte mentioned on the essence of the HEAL or the HEAL, which is Health, Employment, uh, Agriculture, and uh, Local infrastru Infrastructure. Uh, we believe that this is fully aligned with the concept that we're, we are developing on the proposed dollar recovery program, uh, which starts with job restoration, Mr. Chair. And from job restoration after the lockdown, we will go to the job creation program. We, uh, we begin, Mr. Chair, with the flagship programs of the DOLE. We, I, again, let me underscore that with the TUPAD program, which is the emergency employment, we hope to bring this further to the barangays for dispersal, simplify the guidelines para po mas marami ang maka-avail in a shorter period of time. Uh, this to us is the very essence of the enhanced TUPAD. We will push through with the enhanced camp, the COVID am amelioration or adjustment measures, measures program. And again, ensure that the facility and the dispersal will trickle and will cascade to the barrios and the barangays. We will not forget the, our OFWs who have been very much affected by the COVID and therefore sustain and further uh, polish the ACAP, the ACAP guidelines for those who have been displaced, whether permanently or temporarily. Uh, sir, the Barangay Emergency Employment Program, as mentioned by Deputy Speaker El Rey Villafuerte a while ago, is something that has inspired us because this again is the essence of the DOLE recovery program that we're now, as of uh, today, as we speak, we are polishing. By the way, may I also inform you that the whole leadership of the DOLE, all undersecretaries, assets, heads of offices, the two deputy, the two administrators of POEA and OA are here with us listening in and intently uh, securing all the valuable inputs in today's discussion. We will push through with part of a big chunk of the DOLE recovery program is the Barangay Emergency Employment Program. We will partner with the DPWH in ensuring that the employment of locals, those in the construction, kung sila man ho ay uh, Mason or Nagpipinta, etc., should be coming from the locality in that particular area. So, a very close coordination, not only with the build, 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 but with the local, uh, local government and the private sector as well. Part of the dollar recovery program, uh, Mr. Chair, would be a a close um, implementation and uh, uh, a, a close implementation of the occupational safety and health. The Congress last year has passed a very important law on OSH, occupational safety and health. This we will use to the fullest relative to ensuring that uh, the micro, small, and medium enterprises are protected by way of uh, the guidelines as stated in the law. And we hope we can, we can employ uh, new board passers, the nurses and the nursing assistants so that they can help us with the implementation of a good OSH campaign in the countryside. We will um, partner with the Department of Agriculture, not only in agriculture, but also in fish, fishing, fisheries, so that 
a lot of jobs can be created. Plant, plant, plant. Um, as a mantra and as a program of the Department of Agriculture. Lastly, Mr. Chair, there will be a very, very close partnership with TESTA because really the whole essence of um, employment post-COVID will be to ensure that the skills and competencies of our workforce will be adapted to the new norm. And we, we can very well say that the new norm will actually require new skills needed to adapt. For example, in the areas of um, online work, work from home, uh, digital solutions, artificial intelligence, data in analytics, and other related jobs. So with this, uh, present a very brief presentation from the Department of Labor. Again, allow us to congratulate the social amelioration cluster for having convened this and to allow us to participate in today's meeting. Mr. Chair, thank you very much. Mom, thank you so much on behalf of the uh, DCC and I'm sure um, uh, that the speaker, Lady Fuerte and uh, co-chair, um, Oh, Lucy Torres Gomez will be very, very delighted to hear that um, uh, you will be drawing from their um, presentations. Okay? It's on partnership between um, the House of Representatives and the DOLE will definitely enhance the fight against COVID and that we may win this war sooner than later. Marami salamat po, and we please thank um, um, Secretary Bebo because he was one of the first ones to uh, sit in right away at 10 in the morning. But I understand the AITF is ongoing. Marami, marami salamat po. Uh, Sir, at this point, yes, ma'am. One slide presentation. This is a first the social education program of the DOLE. <clears throat> marami pong salamat, Majority Floor. Sir Martin Romualde. Thank you so much to our uh, DOLE family and to um, uh, the good secretary. Uh, at this point, I'd also like to um, uh, acknowledge the um, attendance via Zoom. Our um, uh, congressman uh, uh, from the party list group, um, and who chairs the Committee on Labor and Employment, Congressman Enrico Pineda, as well as our um, uh, Deputy Majority Leader, uh, Congresswoman uh, Crystal Bagatsing uh, from Manila, and uh, our representative from the Kapatam party list, uh, Congresswoman. Um, Sarah Jane Elago. So these are our um, other uh, legislators who are here to he uh, listen and to participate. If you have any questions, kindly um, um, uh, inform them, our Deputy Majority Floor Leader, uh, Sharky uh, Palma, who will collate our questions so that we can um, uh, have them properly moderated and uh, fielded as soon as the presentation is over. Uh, last but not the least, we would like to introduce our Department of Trade and Industry Secretary Ramon Lopez. Secretary Ramon M. Lopez heads the Department of Trade and Industry. His experience in public sector policy management includes service in the presidential management staff, the DTI and the National Economic Development Authority and provided him with the uh, solid background on macroeconomic and industry development. It also afforded him valuable lessons that fueled his success as a top executive of, the, of a, a major Philippine food and beverage company for over 23 years. As DTI secretary, he oversees policy making in critical trade institutions such as the Board of Investments, the Intellectual Property Office the Philipp of the Philippines, the Small Business Corporation, and the Philippine Economic Zone Authority. He has received awards for his role in micro, small, and medium enterprises development and in the promotion of social entrepreneurship through innovation. In 2018, President Rodrigo Roa Duterte conferred on him the Order of Sikatuna for meritorious service to the country. Secretary Lopez earned a bachelor's degree in economics from the University of the Philippines and a master's degree in development economics from the Center of the, for Development Economics at Williams College in Massachusetts. Let us welcome our friend from the Secretary of uh, the Department of Trade and Industry our very good friend and our partner in progress and peace, Secretary Ramon M. Lopez. Secretary, you have the floor. 
magandang umaga or tanghali po sa inyo lahat, mga honorable uh, members and leaders of the House of Representatives, uh, Majority Floor Leader Martin Romualde, salamat po sa invitation and uh, also for heading this uh, session uh, this uh, well today. Uh, Speaker Alan Peter Cayetano na atin pong maputing kapartner po pagdating po sa progress sa micro SME pati po dito sa pondo sa pagbabago at pag-asenso. Eh, isa po siya sa nag-brainchild po ng programa na ito na pinamunuan po ng ating Pangulong Duterte. Ang uh, Deputy Speaker El Rey Villaferte at uh, iba pa pong mga Deputy uh, Speakers uh, pati po kay Chairperson uh, Lucy Torres Gomez. Uh, salamat po sa inyong presentations kanina. Nakinig po ako mabuti at uh, Nag-notes din po tayo at uh, nag-picture po ng ilang mga charts ninyo dahil napakaganda po. Uh, quickly po, ang isa pong uh, mga panibagong inputs po sa atin ay yung pagkakaroon ng mga low uh, income at uh, low middle na naging new poor according po kay uh, Chairperson uh, Lucy Torres Gomez. At ang increasing uh, rate of uh, uh, poor coming also from urban. Dati po maraming poor coming from rural at ngayon po ay nakikita natin ang uh, paglaki ng urban poor lalo na po. At dun po sa presentation po ni uh, Deputy Speaker El Rey na isa pong batikang uh, entrepreneurs and uh, well awarded, uh, most awarded din po siya. Uh, kasama din po natin siya sa isang advocacy on entrepreneurship. Uh, I fully support po dahil when we talk of immediate recovery, ang una po talagang mabilis na pagkakahanap uh, buhay or kitaan ng ating mga kababayan ay trabaho. Yung pong endorse po nating mga uh, pagdanegosyo ay isa lamang po sa mga options pero kung immediately ay meron pong panghanap buhay at livelihood, yun po yung trabaho na talaga pong kailangan-kailangan at yung approach on, on heal on uh, health and education and uh, agriculture and local infrastructure definitely would provide the ready jobs na kakailanganin uh, right after COVID at yung mga pwede nang mag-umpisa uh, even during the uh, general community quarantine ay sana po maumpisahan na. And this is really well aligned also with the Balik Provincia uh, initiatives po ng ating pong mga namumuno sa Kongreso, pati po si Senator Bongo sa Senado. Uh, meron po akong na-prepare na very uh, uh, short presentation at uh, dahil po uh, uh, medyo short notice po, kaya ito lang po ang aming na-prepare. But essentially, this will outline po some of the uh, key programs that we have, uh, assistance po sa micro SMEs during and after the ECQ. So with your indulgence po, uh, next chart. Okay, so ang ating pong micro uh, entrepreneurs, uh, micro SME, what we consider the engine of economic growth because they account for 99.5% of business establishments in the Philippines. And this is just out of all the registered, 99.5. Uh, but if, uh, and the, the total so far, in, at least in the PSA, is 998,000. So parang 1 million na siya. But we got a uh, more recent uh, uh, accumulation, consolidation of all uh, enterprises registered, hindi lamang sa DTI at sa SEC, kung hindi kung sino mismo yung nag-register sa mga LGUs. And our current total is running up to 1.5 million. That means dumadami po ang mga nasa micro SMEs, lalo na, at, uh, at um, dumadami na rin yung nag-register, ibig sabihin. 1.5 million na po ang latest count natin. At ang, ang, pero ang percent po, ay, we expect that this will be still about around these numbers, 99.5% for uh, the micro SMEs. Ang micro po doon ay 88%, ang small ay 10.6%, ang medium ay 0.5%, at ang large ay maliit din po, 0.5%. Next, please. At uh, ito po yung distribution uh, per region. Uh, nakikita po natin yung, of course, the... Uh, national capital region and the highly urbanized cities and the uh, regions uh, with highly urbanized cities. Ito po yung maraming uh, micro SMEs, the presence of micro SMEs. Next, please. In terms of hatian po sa kung anong sector sila, uh, almost half would be on the wholesale and retail trade. 
uh, yung repair of uh, motor vehicles and motorcycles, 46%, followed by uh, accommodations and food services, 14.4%. Uh, Ang manufacturing, uh, kasama na po dito, karamihan dito ay mga food manufacturing, 11.6%. Uh, financial and insurance, 4.6%. Uh, Next, please. Uh, ito po ang monitoring ng ating mga regional offices in terms of yung red po ay those who stop operations. Ang yellow would be those who are still operating at yung green would be those uh, partially operating. And uh, here we can see that uh, because of the ECQ, uh, that is, of course, continuing up to May 15. Napakalaki po ng uh, red or uh, stop operation in the NCR. Uh, that can be seen also in the regions uh, 4A, 4B, uh, pati po sa regions uh, 3. Uh, dito po sa, pati rin po sa region 7 and region, uh, region 11 sa Davao region. Next. Um, so ito po ang nag-stop operation in uh, NCR, 53% ang nag-stop operation. Limited operation, 12.5%. At ang full operation po ay mga 35%. So kung i-total po natin ang limited at full operation, nasa mga 47%. Almost half. At ang mga uh, NCR micro SMEs affected by the COVID-19, those who stop operation, napakadami po, uh, especially dito sa mga MSME, 76%. At ang limited operations and full operations po, nasa mga 24%. In terms of the DTI program for micro SMEs, of course, we are limited by the budget that uh, has been provided to the DTI and the attached agencies such as the Small Business Corporation. The P3 is a pondo sa pagbabago at pag-asenso. Ito po yung ating panglaban sa 5-6 na isa pong programa na inumpisahan po ni Pangulong Duterte. At ito po ay nabibigyan ng Congress ng mga 1 billion to 1.5 billion kada taon. Yung for 2020, the 1.5 billion that's been approved in the GAA, uh, ito po, uh, 1 billion po of the 1.5 is re- program para po dito sa pagnyayari ng COVID-19. And uh, what we're saying is that we're allocating this so that we can provide uh, funds for the micro-entrepreneurs from anywhere from 10,000 to 200,000 per loan. At ang um, pagdating naman po sa small enterprises, we can uh, lend up to 500,000. Uh, unfortunately po, uh, we are limited by the movement of the people. So, Paramihan po or ang applications po will really start once the ECQ is lifted because of the requirement to at least check the, uh, the, the veracity of the uh, yung business application. Ang requirement lang po dito, napakasimple, as long as it's a continuing business for one year. Uh, ang susunod na program is on part of the continuing program ng, ng DTI, really going down to the barangay. Ang DTI, wala pong programa po talaga to sa barangay dahil ang personnel po of DTI is up to the provincial level. And uh, recently, nadagdagan ng up to the municipal to the extent na meron tayong uh, negosyo centers na tinatayo sa bawat municipality. Uh, since we don't have any uh, personnel sa barangay level, ang ginawa po natin ay nakipag-partner na lang po tayo sa mga barangay uh, personnel, barangay officials para po maidala rin natin ang uh, mga barangay seminars, ang negosyo seminars sa barangay. So it's an ongoing program, but what we uh, shall be doing for the 2020 is to, beyond the seminar, kasi sabi nila, puro seminar daw si DTI, wala naman daw binibigay na ayuda talaga na pangsimula man lamang. Kaya salamat sa Congress, uh, kahit pa paano, meron po tayong at least may abot ngayon na anywhere between 5,000 to 8,000 dun po sa atin sa mga negosyo sa barangay. So, balit our total budget for that is only 200 million pesos. So, to the extent magamit po natin to, at least may matutulungan tayo. But we're just limited by this budget. If, of course, if we have more budget, this can we can be able to, to serve more people at the barangay level. Then, uh, the third program is the shared service facility. Uh, this is uh, basically the equipment being given out to the cooperatives, to the group of entrepreneurs, so that we can mechanize their operation and it becomes a... Uh, hopefully raising productivity. 
And uh, this is a very successful program, ongoing po itong program na to. And uh, um, unfortunately, again, uh, na zero budget ito, but with the help of Congress, may initiative po na, na lagyan po ng budget for the uh, uh, congressional initiative, uh, if I remember right, around 500 million. So makakatulong ulit tayo sa mga iba-ibang municipality pagdating sa pag-provide ng shared service facilities. For 2020. Next. Uh, this Caravan is our uh, rolling store uh, format, uh, and now we tied up with uh, the DA's uh, Kadiwa. So, this is basically bringing uh, lower price uh, products, even lower than the suggested retail price. At dinadala yung product malapit sa komunidad para hindi na po sila pumunta sa mga palengke. Uh, PTTC Global MSME Academy, again, is an ongoing uh, facility. And what we have done since PTTC or the Philippine Trade Training Center in along Roas Boulevard and Buendilla, uh, it has been only catering to exporters before. But uh, since last year, we have reprogrammed it to include also the micro SME training para talagang mas malawak ang reach na tong academy na ito. So we have made, converted it into a global MSME academy. Uh, and next is uh, we have uh, right actually today, Ongoing po ito, we have a series of seminars that will train micro SMEs into uh, developing their e-commerce on online platform. Especially now that it's more relevant during the COVID and the quarantine period na hindi makalabas ang tao, uh, lumakaso at tumami yung opportunities, at least yung mga may malilita negosyo, hindi ho sila nag-totally close, they converted their facility into an online platform uh, complemented with a delivery uh, system an outsourced delivery system. Next, please. Uh, there are, of course, uh, since the start of the uh, quarantine period, uh, we, uh, the DTI, together with the IATF, uh, we have been issuing a series of uh, mga issuances, uh, memorandum circular, that will hopefully uh, provide guidelines in the operations of businesses, of micro SMEs, and uh, some of these uh, with respect to ensuring the, continu the continued movement of cargo and the transit of personnel in allowable establishments, especially for those that establishments that we uh, deem really very, very essential, like the food, uh, essential products, manufacture manufacturing thereof, but the supply value chain po nila. Uh, in other words, the suppliers to those uh, industries. Uh, po ay pinagpatuloy even under ECQ. But what's important is the movement of cargo will continue so that we can avert and avoid any potential uh, food shortage, that which is which could be an eventual uh, national issue or, or a more uh, a difficult problem to face. Pagka umabot tayo sa pagkakataon na yon. So at least a, a quick uh, update on this one is that we so far have been uh, uh, producing the the needed food, both from the agriculture as well as the food manufacturing side. Uh, we have surpluses. We have, uh, for example, in the food uh, manufacturing, we are able to operate. The food manufacturers are able to operate anywhere between 70% to 100%. Uh, so, the, para maiwasan ang uh, any food shortage. Ang mga workers ng umpisa nagkaroon ng difficulty in in uh, crossing checkpoints, but uh, over time, na, na overcome na po yun, and now they are they have been able to uh, report in their uh, offices and factories. And uh, and the uh, finished good inventories is uh, around two weeks uh, inventory uh, equivalent, uh, as well as the raw material, mas marami ho, about 45 days uh, inventory. So we have enough food, and so we are assuring the public na wag silang magpanic buying, and that uh, there is uh, enough food to that we have right now and that we continue to produce every day. Then the other issue one says would pertain to the grace period on, on rents, uh, both residential and commercial rents. Ito po ay nasama rin sa Bayanihan Act. Salamat sa Congress at nabigyan po ng grace period at least uh, pag-postpone ng bayad uh, sa mga residential rents at dinagdagan po natin ng pati rin sa commercial rents na grace period. Uh, enhanced operations ng BPO companies and export enterprises ang pag-extend uh, ng retail, ng operating hours of uh, retail establishments, the adoption of uh, processes also for the expedited uh, release of uh, refrigerated containers and dry fans uh, as 
part of the Joint Administrative Order 2001 to avert also any potential uh, port congestion issue. Uh, we've, the DTI and DOF Joint Memorandum Circular also issued uh, guidelines on the operations. Uh, actually, this pertains to the incentives and uh, for the manufacturing of critical uh, products like medical products, medical devices, such as PPEs and, and masks and ventilators. Next. Um, okay, so ito na po yung na-report natin kanina, 80 to 90% production capacity and inventory, days inventory for raw materials. Uh, we are also pleased to note that part of the repurposing of our manufacturing, tulad po na sa nabanggit kanina nila Congresswoman Lucy Torres at the uh, Deputy Speaker Eldray, ay yung pagka-convert po ng uh, ilang mga manufacturing capacity into PPEs, uh, face masks, and uh, other critical products. Uh, the Confederation of Wearables uh, Exporters, CONWEP, uh, have uh, converted some of their facilities to produce PPEs. And these are medical grade uh, coveralls that are now being supplied to, to the, some of the hospitals. Ang nauna po dito yung PGH. At uh, uh, they have now a capacity of 10,000 uh, PPEs per day and which can be expandable to up to 20 to 25,000 per day uh, if they would add the uh, ships. Uh, so easily they have a 300,000 uh, capacity uh, for PPEs. And we have opened this up also, aside from the offering it to the DOH, uh, we've opened it up to private companies, business conglomerates, so that they can sponsor, they can buy in behalf of the hospitals and donate it to, the, to those uh, in need. We have also facilitated the uh, availability of uh, 10 million face masks as uh, being produced by the loan uh, producer exporter out of Bataan. And uh, there are other, uh, we're talking to other uh, suppliers, manufacturers uh, that I will present, I will show later, that will increase uh, the availability of face masks in the country. Uh, then we, uh, our Philippine uh, Pakibalik, Pakibalik. Then our Philippine International Trading Corporation uh, continue to perform its role as the trading arm uh, to procure, to help the DOH in procuring the needed face masks or PPEs. So right now, nakapag-import na po sila ng uh, 2 million face masks uh, in light of the uh, limited production locally. At uh, recently, I think uh, last Friday, dumating na po yung 70, 74,000 PPEs also procured by PITC in behalf of the DOH. Uh, and then uh, there is a, another company, Taiwanese company, New Pinto Group, uh, that will produce, repurposing po ito, uh, produce 1,000 ventilators every month, and that will also produce 2.5 million masks. Next, please. And of course, uh, finally po, the other government agencies, of course, have presented their uh, uh, various programs like the DOLE, the DOF, which is uh, providing the small business wage subsidy program, uh, around 51 billion of that, uh, together with the SSS. Of course, the TESTA has their uh, support uh, to the affected and displaced workers. Uh, the Department of Tourism as well would have their recovery program for their stakeholders. Um, uh, the DA, the DBP and Land Bank. Dito po sa DBP and Land Bank, we've made Aside from what we have as the 1 billion support to micro SMEs, we, are, uh, we, we have talked to the DOF so that their DBP land bank can also allocate out of their portfolio around 30 billion that can add up to the uh, concessional loans that can be granted to the micro SMEs themselves. Because the DOF so far has given, together with DOLE and the DSWD, has, has been giving uh, support to the workers. Now the support for the SMEs themselves, uh, yun po yung kailangan din nating masuportahan. So for now, we've asked for an allocation from the portfolio of DBP and Land Bank. But I understand there are also initiatives in Congress that can uh, also add uh, further uh, support to this sector through legislation. Uh, next, please. I think this is, uh, okay. Uh, and of course, partnership with the different uh, private sectors. Next would, and the next series of charts is, uh, is on the repurposing uh, manufacturing. Okay, so these are the products that are that uh, are to be produced and we have been inviting many manufacturers to 
allocate some of their capacity to produce all these critical items. Uh, so talking to the textile, the garments, uh, electronics, uh, and the other companies that can help us produce the products on the left column. Okay, next. Um, okay, so next. So, so uh, uh, to, to, as a policy to help uh, and to attract uh, investors in this uh, activity, uh, part of the Bayanihan Act is to liberalize the grant of incentives uh, for manufacturing or, and importation of critical or needed equipment. So, we provide po tayo ng uh, exemption in paying import duties and taxes, suspension of export requirement. In other words, uh, kung ang toka nila ay mag-export ng 70% of the requirement, pag nagbenta sila locally, they will be credited as export sales so that they can continue to enjoy the incentives. Next. And uh, these are just some examples. We've mentioned the uh, Medtex that uh, is now producing the face mask. 10 million pieces ang, ang, ang kanilang allocation po for the Philippines for May, June, July. 10 million pieces actually is their entire capacity per month. So, binaallocate na po nila sa Pilipinas yung kanilang capacity for the production capacity of 10 million. Yoko Isada is a Japanese uh, company based in Clark. We, we, were, uh, we recently... Uh, uh, talk to them to allocate also uh, uh, about it has a capacity of 5 million pieces per month, pero 20% to our workforce. So we ask them to expand their capacity so that they can allocate about 2 million pieces uh, per more per month. Next, please. Next. Okay, the EMS is an electronics uh, company. Uh, Okay, and uh, we have asked them also to produce uh, mass uh, in a, with economies of scale. So hopefully they will start uh, producing also about 10 million pieces per month. The PNG will be producing for their own employees and sell and donate the whatever is extra. Their capacity projection is uh, 1.5 million per month. The new Kinpo is yung Presentalina that will do ventilators and face masks of uh, 2.5 million pieces. Next, the, okay, the, the, those are the factories that have been uh, started, medical grade, face mask, and uh, PPEs. The Unisol out of Cebu, uh, they are the ones producing the reusable, washable uh, face mask. So ito po yung naging pandagdag din sa ating supply ng face mask. Uh, okay. Next, it's a garments uh, company. Uh, Conweb, as mentioned, is a garments group, uh, wearable exporters. And uh, together with the other agencies, DTI, Board of Investments, DOH, the PGH, and DOST, uh, ginawa hong medical grade ang uh, PPEs because before, uh, hindi po medical grade at hindi rin acceptable sa hospitals. So what we did, uh, in, uh, in, in, tinrabaho po na makakuha tayo ng supply ng medical grade uh, raw materials. And now we are, they are able to produce 10,000 per day. Next, please. Uh, these are the other uh, producers uh, that's working. They're all working with BOI. Uh, po silang textile mill for fabrics, sewing facilities. Okay, and then uh, fabric capacity is now 12 to 15 tons per day. Uh, throughput equivalent to 20 to 30,000 PPEs. Uh, again, the Unisol will produce reusable protective suits that are non-medical grade with the feta with silver black lining. Uh, currently, the product's being evaluated by the Chonghua Hospital in Cebu. And there are other uh, initiatives, uh, part of this. Okay, next. And the face shields, ito po yung mga iba-ibang projects ng ating mga ka-partner, linking with all those with uh, fab labs ng uh, Department of Trade and Industry. Uh, together with uh, other uh, institutes like UP, Marine Science Institute, Ateneo Environmental Science, my 3D concepts, uh, the foams provided by Mandawe foams, and the plastics by Manly Plastics, Philippine Resin Industries. Okay, so these are the fab labs. Uh, if I recall right, mga 59,000 na ang napuproduce na ganito, na mga out of the uh, SSF and the fab labs. Uh, 59,000 face shields. Uh, due to the uh, high demand in al from, of alcohol, 
we've also convinced other producers, uh, Desilleria Limpuaco, San Miguel Corporation, na hindi nagpo-produce ng alcohol before, but now they've, they've been converting some of their machines to produce uh, rubbing alcohols. Next, please. Kasama na doon ang Asia Brewery and uh, LT Group. Uh, on the drugs, uh, meron din pong mga initiatives to produce the, the medicines. Okay, and the uh, uh, importation being part of the clinical test. These are the efforts being done now by DOH. Next. And uh, so these are the, the other, on the ventilators, so these are the participants. AMS, Collins, New Kinko, and Dyson. Collins is the aerospace parts. Uh, Everwin is also a, it's a US firm producing IOTs, the Internet of Things, and uh, IP cameras in the Philippines. They're renovating their plant to produce 2.4 uh, medical grade masks a month uh, for the local market, and also IR thermometers in coordination with FDAs. And uh, upcoming would be building or producing isolation tents, disinfecting sprays and chambers, uh, hopefully uh, herbal med remedies, and also reconfiguration of passenger planes. Okay, next. Um, uh, being considered also is uh, moving forward uh, after the quarantine or as Congress resumes its session, we would be uh, working uh, with Congress, hopefully, to come up with a stockpiling, strategic stockpiling uh, law uh, that will uh, allow the Philippines to really stockpile on critical medical uh, items. So that pag naulit po ang uh, ganitong pandemic, ay ready po tayo with uh, these uh, materials and the funding support there too. Okay, next. Uh, that's the end of the presentation. Uh, Honorable Majority uh, Floor Leader. Thank you, Paul. Thank you. Th thank you so much, uh, Mr. Secretary, for your very, very comprehensive, very thorough presentation. Uh, we'd be very, very um, uh, delighted that um, uh, you continue to work with us.
everyone. Thank you. Thank you, OGSG Darren. Uh, my first question is for Social Welfare Secretary Pista. Hi, sir. Hello. Ryan, just go ahead and ask your question. So if he's there, he'll answer. If not, the, one of the new sex will try to field it. Thank you, Ryan. Thank you, thank you, sir. Uh, may we know from uh, uh, DSWD officials uh, what other programs are available for the rest of Metro Manila residents who need financial assistance but not covered by social amelioration program? And how are you going to resolve issues hampering the distribution of financial aid? Do we have any member of the DSWD family who is ready to answer the question, please? Okay, Darren, maybe Good you can... Um, uh, yes? Good afternoon, uh, Congressman. This is uh, Sekreya from DSWD. Um, hi, for the, yes, hi, Sir Ryan. So for Hello, the first time, the other programs that we have, and uh, it's still uh, on, we have we still have the AIX. So AIX is the Assistance to Individuals in Crisis Situation. And then um, we, we also have under our, uh, under the Dream G or Disaster Risk Management Cluster, we still have the, we, we still provide for the family food packs and the non-food items. Um, so we augment no? uh, when the LGU would request us to augment, uh, we would provide for the family uh, food packs um, as well as uh, psychosocial services needed. Um, I think these are some of the uh, also for the for recovery that's going to be uh, when the enhanced community quarantine or the community quarantine is uh, lifted, uh, we'll have uh, the livelihood assistance grant um, and we are still uh, uh, considering uh, other programs but uh, we will let you know when our policies will come out because uh, it's not yet at this moment um mom there was also a presentation made by congresswoman yeah. lucy torres earlier. Uh, yeah. she, she was saying mom that the 100 billion budget for one month uh for for sap divided by five thousand per family is enough uh, for a total of 20 million families. Uh, the, the, does the DSWD agree with the computation? Po? Um, we'll, thank you, Sir, uh, Sir Ryan. So we'll have to study that. Um, I could not speak on behalf of the Exacom. Um, we, we, we need to, uh, to talk about that. Um, and uh, we will also heed the advice uh, of the IATF. Uh, on that matter, and we'll follow also the, the law, no? the, the Bayanihan Act. Sir, sir. Good afternoon, sir. Can we, can we ask to repeat the question? Uh, hello, sir. Yes, hello. Yes. Uh, oh, my, my question uh, earlier was, um, uh, Congresswoman uh, Lucy Torres made the presentation um, that the 100 billion budget for one month divided by 5,000 pesos per family is enough uh, uh, to benefit a total of 20 million families. Does the DSWD agree with the invitation uh, made by the uh, Congresswoman? The uh, 100 uh, billion is good for uh, 18 million families. And depending on the... Uh, regional wage rate nila from 5,000 to 8,000. So depende sa regional wage rate ng uh, region. Uh, you don't agree po doon sa computation ni Congresswoman po? 20 million families? Yeah. You might agree, pero... Uh, I would like to stress out uh, Section C under the uh, Bayanihan C, that's one up. It says here, provide an emergency subsidy to around 18 million, 18 million low-income households, provided that the subsidy shall amount to 5,000 to 8,000 a month for two months, and we are referring to April and May, provided further that the subsidy shall, shall be computed based on the prevailing regional minimum wage rate. 
Sorry. 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 Thank you, sir. Uh, DSG Darren, can I ask another question uh, for uh, Secretary Lopez? Yes, sir. Go ahead. Uh, thank you, po. thank you, po. Uh, Good afternoon, po, Secretary Lopez. Uh, good afternoon. Sir, recent, uh, hi, sir. Uh, good afternoon, po. Uh, sir, recent violent incidents uh, were triggered by people who, uh, who failed to to wear face mask. Um, nakita ko po yung presentation nyo. Maganda po yung efforts na ginagawa na nyo para dumami yung supply. But despite all your campaign against overpriced prices of, uh, prices of uh, face masks uh, have remained skyrocketed there normally. 1,000 to 1,500 per box, uh, 50 pieces surgical face mask depending on the quality and the volume of the purchase uh, being made. Um, sir, sir uh, ngayon sir, maraming nagugutom tapos uh, mandatory po yung pag wear ng face mask. Uh, pas, sa saan po ba yung problema para kahit pa paano naman sir, eh, maging affordable po sa mga tao sir. Thank you po. Okay, uh, ang problema ho, bale, nasa cost of raw material. So, nung it's a global concern, actually global shortage, so even the raw materials nagtaasan. And because of that, when we analyze the cost structure, uh, the new SRP, ang face mask, ay nasa 28 pesos per piece. So, with the, with the strong demand coming from everywhere, uh, nagkakaubusan kaya tayo nagkaroon ng efforts to manufacture locally at uh, ibuti na rin yan, isang paraan yan moving forward na to reduce our dependence on uh, critical items like this. So we will continue to push through with the uh, local manufacturing capabilities uh, dito sa atin. Uh, at any rate, yung ginawa naman pong requirement ng uh, IATF is uh, very flexible. Hindi kailangan ng surgical mask, any covering. Uh, pwedeng uh, banyo, pwedeng uh, anong tela, pwedeng uh, washable face mask para ho, ito naman ay hindi maging pabigat muna sa ating kababayan. Importante ho, merong uh, protection at uh, for practicality purposes, pinapadagdagan na lang natin ng iba pang mga covering at ipapatong dun sa washable face mask para talaga protected sila. So in the meantime, we are building the capacities as mentioned. But right now, even despite all these uh, efforts, ang mabubuo natin siguro 20 to 30 million masks per day. If we will be strict with the face mask demand, actually we mentioned last time the computation, assuming isang face mask per, per uh, household na lang, that's already 20 million per day requirement. At kung magpapalit sila every day, times 30, that's already 600 million per month. So talagang malaki yung demand. Ha? Hindi enough yung kahit maka 100 million mask na tayo. But at least tayo, ay, our effort right now is uh, rather than be threatened by that, huge gap, we just continue to build that capacity because that we believe hanggang walang solution sa vaccine at sa medicine, the face mask will be a, an everyday accessory or requirement. Parang damit na yan na gagamitin ng bawat Pilipino. So there should be more capacity on this one. Uh, thank you po, Secretary Lopez. Thank you po, Majority Leader Romualdez. Thank you, DSG Darren. Salamat po. Mr. Chair, I think uh, we could pass the floor to um, Congressman Sharkey because the next reporter um, back, backed out because the question was asked already by Ryan. Thank you. Yes, uh, Mr. Chair, if I may be allowed. Uh, good afternoon po sa ating lahat, uh, to our uh, speaker and our majority leader, members of the House, and the secretaries and USEX and ASEX who are here, and members of the media. Uh, let me just try to summarize some of the questions propounded by our members. Um, first, see, to the DSWD regarding the social uh, amelioration program, uh, it was said that there are cases reported now by the localities. Uh, some of the localities failed to uh, accomplish some of the requirements for the LGUs or for the, uh, for the SAP to be released to the uh, beneficiaries. The uh, first question po is, in the event of failure or uh, non-submission uh, of requirements, uh, considering that there is a time frame for the distribution of SAP, is there any chance that we can rectify this? Um, uh, this uh, yung po ng, ano, mga requirements, can they, still pro can they still submit 
the requirements and perhaps given uh, give them an opportunity to receive the sub uh, amount in a later date or on a later period Yes, they can. Actually, we have extended the uh, submission of their uh, liquidation report uh, for uh, another seven days. It has to be, kahapon dapat patatapos yan, uh, April 30, but uh, in coordination with LGUs, we decided to extend it for uh, another seven days, especially for areas ng NCR, Cavite, Dabao, Cebu, and Cebu. Yes. Uh, sir, sir, it means ito yung mga high-risk areas? Yes, yes. But what about those areas that are that considered high-risk, but, uh, but failed to submit the requirements? Uh, all they have to do is just to submit their uh, requirements, and uh, we will forward it to DILG for uh, appropriate uh, approval. Thank you, sir. Uh, with regard to the SAP uh, distribution, um, it was said that only in the ECQs will be continued for the second tranche. So a lot of the questions came from the provinces that are already considered as low risk and are already or the medium risk and are already considered now under uh, general community quarantine. So just to make sure, sir, uh, is it true that uh, for those under GCQ, they will no longer receive uh, the SAP for the second tranche? Now, uh, for the second tranche, I would like to mention that uh, it is now being tackled by the IATF. That is why Sec Rowley went to the other room discussing possible options. Last Wednesday, we have presented five options to the I IATF and uh, today will be a decision point. They would come into agreement or decision which among the five options shall be selected. So, nasa kampa lang to. Nasa deliberation pa lang ng table ng uh, IATF. And, and so right now, sir, we cannot divulge first, uh, divulge uh, as of now the uh, ano po, options natin. Yes, pending result of the deliberations, we cannot uh, divulge the result. Yes, sir. Uh, how soon can we, ano, sir, uh, get the information from the DSWD or from the IATF? As long as the IATF approves it, normally, nag-anon si Kabsek uh, Nograles sa program niya. So it will be, I know, it will be part of his uh, announcement. Thank you, sir. Uh, sir, just one more question uh, before I pass on the mic to our media personnel. Uh, when, with regard to the, ano po, the social relation again, uh, what is the basis daw for, kasi in some cases daw, uh, it is the barangay officials who are uh, conducting the uh, review and the listing. And to some extent, that, uh, some uh, one, one of our member here reported that the farmers in the, one of his towns uh, were delisted uh, kasi daw parang sumobra ata yung listahan ng uh, local government officials as regards the number of beneficiaries. So a lot of the farmers though in the, in the area were delisted. And uh, can, what, what can we do, sir, for, to rectify this? Uh, yes. Uh, first one is uh, we give in trust namin dito sa ating mga LGUs, sa ating mga barangay captains to uh, prepare the list. No? Now, we... We recognize that uh, there were some who were not uh, included during the first tranche. That is why for the second tranche, no, we are considering to provide yung mga tinatawag nating left outs. And ito yung sinasabi ko kanina na it is now being deliberated sa IATF. Uh, uh, sir, one last na lang po before I pass on. Yung mga forms po daw kasi sir na napirmahan, especially those uh, with the barcodes, napirmahan, uh, it was given to the DSWD, uh, our social workers and the barangay officials. Unfortunately, some of them, or a lot of them, were considered as uh, disqualified. So, ang worry daw kasi ng mga tao nila is, since they already signed the form, the SAC forms, uh, will it be taken against them? Or is there a way ba na pwede nila makuha yung form? Kasi nga, ang fear nila, napirmahan daw. So, it might be taken against them. So, is it possible that if they can uh, 
kunin nila ulit yung SAC form. Anyway, we have a, a validation process on the part of uh, the uh, DSWD to make sure na those who are really qualified or eligible shall receive. Kasi after the first tranche, yung ating LGUs will be submitting uh, document papers sa uh, uh, DSWD sa field offices namin. And uh, we, have to, we have to validate those... Uh, uh, documents no so that we can yes, sir, yung ang, ang concern nila is yung mga napirmahan na sa na sac form and yet they were found out later on to be disqualified so yung form daw kasi since napirmahan na daw nila can they get it back daw since they are already considered as disqualified and even okay. if they are found out especially could disqualified talaga sila yes they are uh, already marked void sa aming sa aming listahan okay thank you sir uh, i will move on first to the sir can i service. just ano uh, in line with that can i ask a question uh, yeah, briefly go ahead dsr <laughs> so i i would like to address this question sa dswd yung um you mentioned earlier that you're still uh, finalizing with iatf the regarding the staff no po Yes. Uh, ang Camarini Sur uh, today, May 1, is already GCQ. So the question uh, in relation to Sharky is, uh, will yung nabigyan ba ng SAP, will they be qualified or not? Ngayon, uh, there, well, we've heard that hindi na. <laughs> Just in case, no po, na-consider na, well, we, we better kung meron, no? But gusto lang namin i-raise uh, as a possible suggestion sa DSWD. Kasi marami kasing mga qualified, sir, na hindi nakakuha. So what we're suggesting is, instead na dodoblehin mo pa yung nakakuha at yung uh, qualified na hindi nakakuha, hindi makakakuha, parang adding insult na po yun, na uh, makaka-10,000, for example, yung isa, sila zero. So may we propose, kung uh, GCQ na or may plano kayong hindi ituloy, dapat bigyan na lang sana ng programa na mabigyan yung mga hindi na, yung qualified na hindi nabigyan. Uh, is that is that part of the no, uh, proposal, sir? Noted. I would not want to preempt you making decisions ng uh, IATF, but I would want to stress out na there were five options which they are now deliberating. No? Okay. They started deliberating it last uh, Wednesday and they will continue the, uh, making decisions now kasi maraming mga, kwan, eh, maraming mga comments. But I'm sure... Uh, kasama okay. yan sa mga options that we presented to IATF. Oh, yes, we will not anymore ask the option. We will just wait, wait for the decision. Uh, follow up na lang last. Uh, ano naman po ang ginagawa ng DSWD po dun sa mga nabigyan ng uh, SAP na hindi qualified, documented? For example, uh, may negosyo, uh, cementado ang bahay, mayroon pang SUV na nakaparada na nakita namin sa Facebook. Uh, mayroon rin na uh, elected official, uh, hindi siya qualified pero uh, binigyan niya yung anak niya o asawa niya. Ano po yung hakbang na ginagawa po ng DSWD? Okay, Dahil yan po ang mga tinatanong sa amin ng mga constituents po namin. At uh, ano po ang, uh, ang uh, paano po makakarating po sa inyo yung mga reklamo na yan? Kasi yung, yung grievance mechanism po na nakita namin... Uh, telephone number na mah mahirap pong tawagan po ng mga kababayan natin. Uh, baka meron po kayong uh, Facebook or hotline na pwedeng uh, mag-post na po doon ang mga ating kababayan kung sino yung mga hindi, quali hindi qualified at mabigyan na na ebidensya agad. Yes, uh, thank you very much. Uh, that is to be validated and uh, the LGUs will be accountable. It is included sa aming provisions na omnibus uh, uh, guidelines na which we drafted that uh, if there are ineligible families no, na natuklasan, na nabigyan ng uh, social amelioration uh, fund, then uh, they will be subject to some administrative or uh, uh, process para... Uh, makita yung kanilang responsibility or accountability. For one is, uh, hindi na sila bibigyan for the second tranche, and uh, the other is uh, for them to be to be accountable of uh, their own uh, wrongdoing. Sir, salamat po. Malino naman po sa batas yan. Ang tanong lang talaga namin sana, kasi marami talagang uh, 
marami may, nag, meron rin na mga nabigyan na hindi qualified. Sana magkaroon kayo ng grievance mechanism either na accessible po sa tao sir. Yun lang request po namin na kasi nagkakalat sa Facebook po at baka mas maganda siguro DSWD na ang may Facebook na para ang ating mga kababayan direkta na po sa inyo at makikita pwede na nilang ilagay yung mga reklamo at pruweba nila. Uh, kumbaga kasi ngayon na uh, the new normal accessible na po yung uh, Facebook or other means na sa tingin nyo ay tama. Salamat. Yes, uh, thank you. We'd like to recognize our uh, mga esteemed uh, minority floor leader, uh, Congressman Bishop Benny Abante. Could you uh, uh, make your question clear and uh, straight uh, and direct it straight to the um, uh, resource person? Thank you, Bishop Benny. Brother SWD, please. Uh, yung pong sinabi ni Congressman Elroy kanina, uh, meron na po ba mga nag-complain sa inyo on that account? Uh, yes, uh, we are receiving uh, so many complaints and I would like to mention na uh, meron kaming uh, web page at saka social amelioration hotlines. We have uh, Smart, Globe and Sun na pwede nilang tawagan operating uh, 24-7. Also, we have uh, grievance redress uh, system and uh, Facebook account uh, dswd.government that ph so lahat ng mga concerns uh, reklamo could be could be aired dito sa kanila yung facebook account and hotline i uh, mentioned earlier kung ba hindi po yata alam niya ng karamihan kapag nakikita po namin sa facebook sa sa mga news lalo na yung mga matanda sa mga probinsya na hindi nakakaalam po ng mga grievance sa uh, uh, phone numbers na yan no po sana ay eh, eh, may ano yung sa LGU at talagang ilagay doon sa mga barangay kung paano po sila tatawag at paano sila magkocomplain. Uh, pangalawang tanong ko, DSWD, uh, ano ganito? Kasi ang binibigay nyo, 5,000 saka 8,000, no? Uh, marami rin talagang hindi nakakatanggap yan. Pwede po ba na uh, hindi naman yung talagang uh, Uh, is strict na 8,000, pwede ba pagatiin yan? For example, like 4,000 per family para nakakasiguro tayo na lahat magkakaroon ng ayuda. Kahit na hindi po yan kumpletong 8,000, pero eh, 4,000 po, eh, napakalaging bagay po yan sa, lagam, sa mga mahihirap. Pwede po ba yun? Uh, yes. we've, been, we've been receiving so many uh, concerns like that na they would want to spread yung benefit among uh, majority but uh, uh, according sa Republic Act 11469 which is Bayanihan to Hiles 1 very specific doon na 5,000 to 8,000 depending on the regional wage uh, ng uh, bawat region so we could, not, we could not split that talagang we have to stick sa regional wage rate by region <laughs> Okay, let's um, um, go back to the um, uh, order that we've uh, you, thank you, thank established. Um, Kong Sharky, you're done for the uh, this, this set of um, Kong's questions. We go back to Darren for the media questions. Uh, thank Mrs. you. Mr. Uh, majority Leader, can I ask a question? Uh, uh, Chairman Mark, can you uh, no, um, uh, just um, uh, field it through um, uh, Kong Sharky? You uh, okay. the, you know. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, okay, Chairman thank Mark. You. Okay, no problem. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chair. We have a phone-in question from Kathleen Forbes of Radio Pilipinas. This is a question for DSWD, DTI, and Dole, if Dole is still here. There are numerous calls to fast-track the implementation of the national ID system to help in targeting families who need financial aid. But according to Deputy Speaker Mikey Romero, kulang yung information sa national ID to actually determine kung sino talaga ang nangangailangan ng tulong. One of his suggestions is to include income and employment okay. or other work status information okay. para mas comprehensive yung information. Uh, kasi marami kami rito na nagtupad. Dan, can you um, mute um, Chairman Mark? Pero um, yung amount sa tupad. Dan, sir. Dan, yeah, who is the question being directed to? To the cabinet secretaries. Or the other secretaries who are here. Um, okay. Mm -hmm. uh, who's available? Who's available? Ay, okay. 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 
national ID system po. Do you think adding such information can better help agencies in identifying recipients of government aid? Uh, okay. Do you have anyone from the DSWD or uh, no, uh, the DTI or the DOLE who would like to um, uh, answer that question? For uh, DSWD, uh, yes, we are uh, for the ID system. Actually, it would uh, help help us in uh, determining the uh, the uh, poor families uh, nationwide. For the dollar. Uh Uh, Dole, your your audio is very weak. Could you come in a bit stronger? <laughs> Sir, can you hear me? A little better now. Okay. Uh, on the part of the dollar, sir, uh, we don't think that uh, income and uh, will be uh, necessary in the national ID. Dole, you're coming in very weak. <laughs> Sir, we'll get back to you. Okay. Is anyone from the DTI ready to uh, answer the question? Uh, the yes. Uh, yes, sir. Uh, this is Yusek Bless Lantayona of uh, DTI. We are for the national ID system, and if there is a need uh, for us to to submit um, information on the clients that we are assisting, we are we would be very glad to submit this so that the initiative for the national ID system could be completed very soon. Thank you very much. Majority, I can I just add to that? Lucy, um, can Lucy, I add something to that? Uh, yes, uh, Coach Lucy first. Yeah, Majo, I just wanted to answer that question. No? I think uh, if we had a national ID system, it could have helped greatly in the implementation of the program for DSWD. But more than just a national ID system, I think what we really need is an accurate pre-baseline, pre-disaster baseline data. That's what we don't have. If you notice in every disaster, that's why we're always in a tight fix because that's the only time that we come up with lists. We should have an accurate and a constantly updated pre-disaster baseline data, which I hope we can start doing now, even as we fight COVID, because this won't be the last um, disaster that we will be facing. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much, um, Co Chair Lucy. DSLA, please go ahead. Yeah, I, I was uh, one of the authors of the National ID. Uh, definitely, that, has, that should have been rolled out a long time ago, but since there's a law, I read that they're implementing it and fast-tracking it according to uh, use, uh, Secretary Kalchu of the NEDA. Uh, but regarding the suggestions of all, basically, once you have a national ID, you can input any data. Tama uh, si Lucy, all we need is for the government, uh, through the PSA or through an updated national higher housing targeting system, to have the data and just input it in the software or inputs of the national ID. So... <coughs> While the ID system has basic information of uh, age, name, address, you can actually input there any data as income and otherwise. In fact, you can even put there what type of uh, government help they were able to get already. So I think uh, really it's a must, number one, to fast track the ID system. Then secondly, uh, a database, a real actual survey na accurate that we can use for, uh, uh, for a government subsidy. Thank you so much, DSLA. Darren, the next media question. Yes, Mr. Chair. Still from Kathleen Forbes of Radio Pilipinas. This is, di this is directed to Speaker, the Majority Leader, DSLA, and the House Leadership. Her question is, may naging dialogue na ba between DBM regarding the budget cuts of agencies that were used to augment the COVID-19 crisis response? Yesterday, sa meeting ng Higher and Technical Education Committee, CHED appealed that DBM reconsider the 35% cut from the program funds kasi maapektuhan ang Universal Access to Quality Tertiary Education Act while TESDA adjusted their scholarship targets dahil rin sa budget cut. Na address na ba? Oh. Yeah. Go ahead, go ahead. 
Go ahead. Done, sir. Okay, DSLR, I think, would be the best um, uh, suited to answer this. He's been tasked by the speaker to spearhead this effort to the DBM. DSLR? Yeah, in answer to that, ano, um, the congressional leaders are in constant communication with the DBM, the economic clusters, and the uh, uh, Department of Health of Concerns. First, uh, we, when we passed the Bayanihan uh, law, we gave them the power to transfer realign. Uh, but uh, I think that law was, uh, is only uh, valid until May 23, right? It, it only has a two-month validity. So what we're talking about now is how much have you already spent, how much more you need. <clears throat> so yan po importante. And I, basically, if they've uh, given us uh, how much they spent so far, around $352 billion, which they source from the savings of 2019 and uh, some for 2020. So... Moving forward is, what else do we need? Then secondly, for the 2021 budget, definitely there will be more COVID-related uh, uh, budgetary uh, allocations for health, as mentioned, infra, job generation. So ano naman po, in constant communication naman po ang executive with the legislative leaders. Okay, thank you. Anything more from the media? Uh, sorry, I already asked two questions. Maybe I okay. could pass Kong the Sharky. mic to Kong yes, Sharky. Thank you, thank you, Darren. Um, going back to SAPs, uh, ang concern po dito ng mga senior citizens and PWDs, uh, a lot of the senior citizens and PWDs were uh, disqualified under the SAP because accordingly they receive uh, pensions from other sources. And then, ang question po kasi dito is, uh, since ang pension daw is mas maliit lang, uh, what can we do to help the senior citizens and the PWDs? In so far as the SAP is concerned po. Sharky, who's the question from and who are you? Oh, to the DSWD, sir. Okay. And, uh... okay po, uh, I will answer that po. Uh, our guidelines po provides that... Mayroon ka ng tubig, Dai? They are not excluded po yun po ating mga senior citizen because their pension is their vested right. So it so happened lang po na napasabay siya sa pagbibigay ng SAP. Nevertheless, if the family of the senior citizen falls within the category of low-income family from the informal sector, yun pong family is entitled to the SAP as well as the senior citizen is still entitled to his or her vested right as senior citizen grantee po ng DSWD. Ma'am, paano po yung sa PWDs? Ganon din po ba? Uh, ang PWDs po, uh, sila po yung family where they belong must be prioritized in the determination po as SAP beneficiary. Uh, ang SAP po is ibinibigay po natin sa ang unit of assistance is the family. So it is not given to an individual kasi po it was computed on the basis na meron po tayong 4.8 members of the family. So, yung pagiging PWD po niya uh, nag, nagbibigay ng priority sa family niya na ma-include po sila sa SAP. But individually, hindi po natin sila mabibigyan ng SAP po. Kasi ang usual na problem, ma'am, is uh, nakikita namin is for a single family, for example, in a single family, meron ng PWD, meron pang senior citizen. So, ang question lagi nila is, are they entitled to receive the SAPs. Kasi in one family, meron na nga pong PWD at meron pang senior citizen. Um, how do we, ano po, how do we respond to that? Ang, ang basis nga po ng assistance natin or the unit of assistance is the family. So the family is entitled to receive only one SAP. Nevertheless, the senior citizen, kung qualified po siya at nakaregister po siya sa DSWD as social pensioners, uh, makakareceive din po siya ng um, social pension grant niya po. Yung pong PWD, they can still avail of other uh, services na ipoprovide po ni DSWD as PWD as an individual. Ganun po yun, sir. As an individual na po. Thank you po. At least malinaw na po. Um, again, uh, with the social amelioration program, uh, marami pong mga LGUs ang hindi pa po nakapag-release or hindi pa tapos ang releasing ng kanilang funds. Uh, as a request, is it possible daw ba na makapag-extend ang release ng uh, beneficia uh, ng, ng funds natin? And if at all, is it possible ba na 
since kulang daw ang personal ng DSWD, would it be possible if the local government or the uh, JLG uh, be able to provide uh, additional manpower to para mapabilis po ang release ng ating program, ating funds? Uh, sir, uh, as mentioned a while ago by Yusek Pamonad, the Secretary of the SWD and the DILG allow the, allows the LGU to have a seven days extension on the payout. So, uh, and uh, by design po, it is really the LGU and their manpower who distributes the payout po for our beneficiaries. Nandun lang po ang mga DSWD from the field office or the central office to perform the on-site validation or the post audit po. So definitely the LGU can augment po talaga. And we are enjoining our LGUs to really um, augment po talaga in the provision of the SAP for our beneficiaries. Thank you po ma'am. Um, sa atin pong Dole, uh, do we have representative from Dole here? Yeah, ma'am. Hello po. Uh, ma'am, sa Dole po, with regard to our camp, our... Uh, kasi ang camp natin po ay natigil. Uh, ang question po ng mga members natin is, is there any chance ba na maibabalik ang camp? for the MSMEs, especially the employees of the MSMEs. And then, uh, if ever it will be allowed, uh, if, if ever it will be continued, when will it be implemented? Um, sir, currently, uh, meron po tayong additional na 1.5 billion na na-realign po from the 2020 budget. And ito po ang ginagamit natin for additional 300,000 workers na under camp. Initial, nung una po, nakapagbigay na rin po tayo ng mga 1.74 billion uh, and ang beneficiaries po natin dyan is around 350,000. So all in all, ang makcover lang po talaga ng budget namin ay mga around 650,000 workers. Now there is almost 1 million camp applications that we have processed na unserved na po namin because we really don't have funds for 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 the same. Pero ma'am, sabi po kanina, merong nabanggit si speaker na meron na atang nailaan na, na pondo na additional on top of the 1.7 something na binanggit ninyo. Pero ang question na lang po ay uh, with that inclusion of the additional funds, how much na po ang, uh, how many na po ang ating magiging beneficiary? 